in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed in the name of Jesus, I command this spirit to live now. I decree, my God, what is this that I'm seeing? Let them go now. Release them now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and I declare. Overflow one, there is a miracle coming for someone. I cast that spirit now. Let them go now. Release them. This is the place of God's power. I challenge you, my God. I'm seeing dark clouds rising from people. Release them now. I bring to end every captivity. I'm seeing names written on the ground. Names written on the ground. This is a symbol of bondage. I release such people now. We are teaching, but let me minister for two, three minutes based on what I'm seeing. I cast those demons right now. Release God's people right now. Now, in the name of Jesus. I'm ministering to specific people. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing something like shadow coming on people and making them feel dizzy. This is an attack. I command that spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let them go now everywhere within this auditorium. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. This may not be to everyone, but that's why this place is called Koinonia. God is not only ministering to us, he's visiting people. Are we together? Shalabaruza Two more times. cannot hear you when they are oppressed I'm seeing chains on people's hands and I'm seeing the number 15 in the name of Jesus I declare upon these 15 people wherever you are by the fire of the Holy Ghost I break those chains now please help them just help those under the anointing I command those chains be broken now I command those chains hear the word of the Lord be broken now be broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated if you can. The Lord desires that we continue to be spiritual men. And one of the indices of true spirituality is discernment. The ability to tap into the impulses of the realm of the spirit. And to understand supernatural angelic activities. And also demonic activities. And then by the power of decree to set at liberty them that are bound. You will be surprised that this revelation God showed me may just be for one person for just two people but then it is worth it for that one person 
this is why he or she came for koinonia there's a lady in overflow three overflow three the lord is showing me a lady in overflow three i'm seeing something that looks like a crown but that's not a crown of royalty it's a symbol of bondage i take it off right now by the power of the holy ghost i take it off right now by the power of the holy ghost we'll get to the word shortly this is koinonia so just just allow me to do the things that i'm doing please bring the person that shouts under the anointing outside overflow one i'm seeing fire and it's coming on someone right now and the lord wants me to prophesy over that person is bringing restoration my dear to your family and light is touching someone from here to this place this row as I'm seeing the same thing God is doing on this lady God is doing to someone on that row in the name of Jesus Christ I prophesy restoration I don't care what the limits are we place the word of God upon your situation and I declare supernatural restoration supernatural restoration in the name of Jesus the Lord is driving away the spirit of death over three families hold on please three families I'm hearing in the spirit three families in the name of Jesus wherever they are you are representing that family I declare the spirit of death, hell, the grave, we curse you by the power of the highest. We, we set at liberty right now these families. We extend their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are going to be seated shortly. You see, listen. As a minister of the gospel, your assignment is not just to come and teach. Your assignment is also to be sensitive to the things that God wants to communicate. Are we together now? God is bringing someone at overflow two to the realm of the prophetic. Overflow two by the roadside. I'm seeing a grace. There is an anointing that is bringing someone into that experience of the prophetic so that you will begin to hear and you will begin to see not like you are hearing, not like you are seeing. It's a realm of your glory, it's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Just one last prayer, and then we're seated. I'm seeing the grace for speed and restoration. 
that anointing is coming on at least 21 people I stretch my hands now speed that grace that anointing Lord all those who must enter these dimensions in this season I activate that grace speed doesn't matter what you have lost doesn't matter what has left you I release that grace speed 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 i prophesied i declare as one sent from the almighty speed to your life the families that you are representing i command speed how forcible are right words i declare the force of prophecy speed you will marvel at the things that begin to happen i declare by the god of jeshuron in the name of jesus christ Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please be seated if you can. Let's just take two minutes to just pray in the spirit while you are seated. The various ministrations of the spirit. That's why you came. The spirit of God is still blessing people. Just do what I ask you to do. Just sit while you are and pray in the spirit. You are receiving something. Your year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I empower you. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I empower you. I empower you. Shamarakatos kalabarikata, negate preska dalikato zasi anahasabrakatosia. It will be like a dream. You are being lifted by the hand of the Almighty. There is a force that is lifting you beyond the limitations of men. There is a force that is lifting your family. You came for koinonia. I speak it in the name of Jesus. And by the power of the Holy Ghost. the lord is still telling me he's bringing speed i'm doing a quick walk a quick walk a quick walk that's what the holy ghost is telling me a quick walk this is the season of the quick walk i'm doing a quick walk by the power of the Holy Ghost, I release that grace upon this house. The grace that makes things happen fast. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it and we receive it. We declare a quick walk by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. It says, for he that cometh to God must believe first that he exists. You are not coming to meet an idol. Number two, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Listen, koinonia is not just a teaching ministry. It's not just where you come to learn. There is a spiritual impartation 
you are immersed in a reality and you step out of it with an evidence that no power, no force, no devil can contest or deny. It's reality. These are not shadows. You will watch in wonder as you begin to see the testimonies that unfold just from the experiences. You see, God visits you through his word. He visits you through his power. Leave the realm of argument where you come and you are wondering, can God touch me? Can God bless me? No, it's a deposit of his grace. This place is a portal. It's an access point to the throne. God made it so by his grace. And that if you are humble enough to believe and receive, just one encounter is enough. You don't need to come twice. One and it's impossible to leave this place tonight and not return with a testimony. No, no. Listen, if this is your first time coming here, I'm telling you it's impossible. You will never have to come twice to have a testimony. It doesn't matter. You are under a system that is bound by a covenant. This is not just something about a man's intention. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you have done tonight. We declare that forever Jesus will be lifted in this place. Lord, more than a man, may your people see Jesus. May they see Christ lifted and glorified. Tonight, change our lives by the power of your word. In the name of Jesus. Please just sit down, everyone. I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. This is not for everybody. There are specific people that this prophetic word is joy, 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 joy. I'm giving you joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. Joy for morning. Mighty God, we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Just help those under the anointing. And um, let us get to the word. These are the various ways and systems in the kingdom by which God lifts men. More than the communications of men. This is a spirit communication. That God invades your spirit man and deposits something upon you. You see, God, just within these few minutes, has distributed so many things so many things activating gifts dimensions bringing people into realms and levels most times you may not understand what you have received until you step out of this place and then you will see possibilities activated and you will know that this one was by the finger of God hallelujah Second Peter chapter 1, let's get to the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is bringing restoration to someone among the ushers. 
I just saw this now in a flash. One of the ushers, the Lord is bringing restoration. Restoration by the Spirit. And God is saying it will no longer be like before. It will no longer be like before. It will no longer be like before. In the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 1. I don't know who this is for but the Lord is saying I should tell you my word still stands my word still stands what I told you must come to pass the way I said it the Lord is saying I should tell somebody my word still stands no matter what you have seen this is a prophetic word for someone and I speak by the Spirit God is saying I should tell you my word still stands my word my word still stands no matter what you have seen my word still stands i've spoken once i will not speak again my word still stands my word still stands Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled. Please sit down. I want you to be very sensitive to what God is doing. This is not just people shouting carelessly or falling under the anointing. No, this is God birthing definite things in the lives of people birthing very definite things things you can see things you can relate with you will know and you can know that this one was by the hand of god second peter chapter one we we'll start from verse two we're reading the first three verses after from verse two just help those under the anointing grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ the next verse says according as his divine power hath given us all things ah, fire is burning in this house I tell you fire is burning in this house 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 all that i'm seeing in the spirit is fire just fire fire don't mind my madness just allow me to do this thing i'm just seeing fire that's what i'm seeing fire you know when these things start no matter how you try to concentrate sometimes you just continue to see um, there's a young man here you are in ministry the Lord is telling me that you are entering the realm of the miraculous right now the dimension of strange miracles God has been dealing with you for months you have been having encounters it's even part of the reasons why you came here and God is saying you are stepping into a strange dimension of miracles. Kabaruzi Kataria. Wherever they are in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let the grace and the unction that brings men into dimensions of the miraculous. You will know you have come to receive something solid. You will go back to your ministry 
and in the name of Jesus you will see the hand of God in unusual ways let the sick be healed under your hand let lives let testimonies let testimonies 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 Jakatabarakata is like a well of fire from within your spirit opening up a well of fire from within your spirit I shift you to a level of miracles a level of signs and wonders hallelujah you know sometimes God just interrupts the service to minister to his people and it's important to be sensitive because sometimes this five ten minutes of ministration I know that next week is a miracle service but sometimes you always will not have to wait for the miracle service there are people whose situations are a matter of life and death so it's, it's God bringing people into that realm it's, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit entirely by the anointing of the Holy Spirit so he introduces levels realities into your life these are the dimensions that no man can gain say nor resist please sit down let's see if we can make progress we have a lot to do our retreat starts tomorrow and Sunday Maybe this will be the last one and then we'll trust God for grace. This lady, Kende, the Lord is bringing, I'm seeing a fire that is coming upon her and the Lord is saying he's burning everything that has been deposited into her body. This is sickness, sickness. But in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to give way right now anyone sick here if there is anything sickness I sense a healing anointing right now sickness be healed be healed now be healed please help them be healed anything that has entered your body every deposit to manifest as sickness be healed I bring you the life and the power of Jesus be healed it goes once and for all uncontrolled flow of blood goes now uncontrolled flow of blood it goes now once and for all it leaves your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is healing a breast lump I decree and declare that lump dies now that lump dies now that lump dies now that lump dies now The Lord is breaking a circle of joblessness in a family. All of you in that family, there's not one person that has a job. But I'm seeing like a sword coming right now. And in the name of Jesus, I don't know where that family is. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, your season for testimony, your season for testimony, I break that circle right now. In the name of Jesus, for he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder i release that family enter your realm of testimonies in the name of jesus christ please sit down thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus mighty god Let's continue. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 now. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4. It says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. What did he give us? Exceeding great and precious promises. 
So how did he make us partakers through the promises? He left promises that when we access and walk in that reality, we will be partakers of that divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through loss. Bless your word tonight. And in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will increase us. Amen and amen. Last week, I started teaching on the warfare dimension of kingdom wealth. I'll be teaching along that line. Not exactly the same thing, but then I want us to listen very carefully because for many people, the subject of the blessings of God, divine supplies, wealth and prosperity has always been seen as the activity of carnal people. Those who do not love God and those who don't want to grow spiritually. But that is not true. I took out time to explain to you that the fight for resources is the fight for the souls of men. Remember my teaching? Yes. And that there will always be a demand by Satan to give your soul in exchange for material things. So it's not just that your soul, listen carefully, it's not just that your soul is given to the devil, but that your spiritual growth and your spiritual health is mortgaged for the purpose of material supplies. And I gave you a litmus test that you can know you have fraternized with this system when your wealth grows as your spirit dies. Satan will never allow both your soul and your pocket to rise together. When your pocket begins to rise, he will come and negotiate that your spirit goes down. Are we together? And that has been the system. So people give up the activities that make for the health of their soul to look for money. But in the name of Jesus, there is a generation of men and women rising by the Spirit of God who will prosper even as their souls prosper. Amen. And so I told you there is a warfare dimension that the king of Tyre, Satan himself, sits upon that mountain that represents the economy of the earth. And we're going to look at the second aspect today and I'm just going to talk to you two words, basically, that we'll be teaching um, along those lines. And then God will grant us grace. Genesis chapter 1, please. Genesis chapter 1. When God made man, he gave a command. And the first word that man heard from God, according to verse 28 and God blessed them and said unto them be fruitful everybody say it after me be fruitful number two multiply number three replenish the earth number four subdue it that these four dimensions is what makes for dominion that for the saints to at any point command dominion all of these dimensions must be captured in their experiences you must have the ability to be fruitful you must have the ability to multiply you must have the ability to replenish and then to subdue i'm not talking about all of those dimensions i just want to connect something I did a teaching before we went on a short break on be fruitful. Please, you need to get it. It's very, very important because I want to start building from there. God is a God of increase. God is a God that desires the saints to increase and to be fruitful. And um, when the Lord mandated man to be fruitful, please leave the scripture there. Many theologians have taught that what God meant by be fruitful is just biological fruitfulness, like have children and replenish the earth. I, I believe there is a dimension of that. But as I began to study this, the Lord opened my eyes to certain dimensions. And that's where I want to start with tonight. That there are 
at least five levels or five areas where God desires the saints to be fruitful. Write it down, please. Number one, the womb, or what you call fruitfulness, children. The womb. When God told man be fruitful, he meant to be able to carry seed up until delivery and by so doing multiply the earth number two the mind be fruitful means that your mind must also be fruitful number three your hands be fruitful your hands must also be fruitful number four be fruitful your mouth your lips must also be fruitful just follow me carefully and then lastly your spirit so when God spoke to man and said be fruitful he was not just speaking to the womb of the woman he was speaking to all of these dimensions of man that the womb be fruitful the mind be fruitful the hands be fruitful the mouth be fruitful the spirit be fruitful are we together the fruit of the womb is the child. The fruit of the mind is ideas and creativity. Please write. When the womb gives birth, you call the child or you call the fruit a child. When the mind or your thoughts give birth, you call the fruit ideas. When the hands give birth, you call the child work or accomplishments. When the mouth gives birth, you call it words. When the spirit gives birth, you call it character. And so all these dimensions must be captured in the experience of the believer. If you are to walk in fruitfulness and if you are to challenge the powers that be we have dealt with the fact that there are spirits that sit upon this mountain and we agreed that one of the ways that we challenge these spirits is by our allegiance to the system of the kingdom are we together we rounded up in the last meeting with the Daniel where daniel and the three hebrew boys came and said oh king we will not bow we know that the way of safety and security is to bow to this idol but we have made up our minds that our god is able to deliver us are we together and so it is possible that we conquer this spirit influences by refusing to bow to these operations but it does not automatically translate into the blessings of the saints and i want to just guide you very briefly tonight i'm talking very briefly on the power of productivity the power of productivity this is a very scarce teaching in the body of Christ and even in Africa the power of productivity submitting to the government of Christ in the face of these controlling powers is not enough to deliver the inheritance of Christ to the saints there is a weapon of mass destruction given to the saints wherewith we can paralyze the systems of darkness and possess what our possession is the name of that weapon is productivity say productivity please write this down there is a difference between value and productivity there is a very huge difference between being valuable or value and productivity value talks of your inherent abilities 
value talks of your potentials value talks of your transactable skills that means that everything you piece together that can become an advantage in your life is called value but productivity is more than value are we together now just because you are valuable does not guarantee that you will be rewarded the world is full of many valuable people but in the face of economic hardship even their value is not able to deliver to them the kind and the extent of supplies that they need are we together now it is important to be aware of value but just camping at that realm of value is not enough to empower the saints please write this down productivity is the quality or the ability to create make or enhance products and services that are needed and useful i'll take it again productivity is the quality or ability to create make or enhance products and services that are needed and useful never forget this this definition that productivity is the quality to be able to create and make products and services that are needed and useful look up please everyone while value talks of your inherent abilities productivity refers to a system where you turn those abilities into products and services that are needed and useful it is not valuable people who are rewarded it is productive people are we together please you may write this down financial resources will always follow productivity not necessarily value financial resources will always move the direction of productivity productivity also refers to the ability to make anything in abundance the ability to provide the abundant supply of anything is productivity So God has a system for our prosperity. He's a God of increase. In spite of the fact that there are giants on these mountains, Satan himself sitting at the helm of the economic affairs to manipulate the saints into lack, into poverty, and by so doing, distract them so that they do not have the time to prosper and serve the purposes of the kingdom. And I'm teaching you that one of the weapons to bring victory economic victory is productivity any man any woman any church any organization that is not productive will be poor it's a law please listen carefully any man any woman any church any business any organization that fails to be productive there is no system to authorize reward for a non-productive personality before i discuss a few things and a few ways that god can help us to be productive let me destroy what i call the consumer mentality Please listen to me, Africa. One of the greatest unbecoming of this continent is what we call a consumer mentality. Say consumer mentality. It is seen 
for God to give you a thing and then it shrinks and dies and you cannot transfer the abundance of that to a generation it is sin everything God gives men he expects that they increase in the parable of the talent Matthew chapter 25 the Bible talks about three men who were given talents one five talent listen carefully the other two talents and then the last a talent and the Bible says the one with the five went and made five more increased the other one with two went and made two more but the one with one talent returned back and said you are a hard man you reap where you didn't sow and Jesus called him a name he didn't call him lazy man he said you are a wicked and unprofitable that's the word unprofitable there is no gain trusting you wicked and unprofitable servant Africa has been plagued and sadly respectfully so but sadly our educational system has also contributed in building the consumer mentality are we together now so the the whole idea of productivity is foreign to an average african and worst of it all to an average believer the subject of productivity is not taught believers we we have been trained to ignore productivity let me tell you i think the worst scam is to expect life to give to you something the bible says give and it will be given to you that's the law it didn't say what you give is what must be given but until you give nothing should be given back to you so if you do not give and you expect that something should be given back to you it's amazing my brothers and my sisters how many of us many of us even seated here just believe that life will have a way and find a way of coming to bring resources to you to meet your needs just because God is alive does not mean your needs are met guaranteed are you getting what I'm saying now productivity so the average person thinks consumption give me let me eat it has finished give me another one let me eat it has finished daddy give me this it has finished productivity we lack this grossly in africa are we together now yeah so people collect their salaries and when they collect their salaries the moment there is a short supply of that salary for two or three months they are back because there was no productivity there was money, but no productivity. Are we together now? Yes. Productivity is a system of increase. In mathematics, we have addition, we have subtraction, we have multiplication. And another name for multiplication, they say find the product of this. And you know that they are talking about multiplication. It's a system of increase. Woe betides any soul that does not understand the law of productivity. The days that are here now, not the days that are coming, will create a level of frustration upon that individual and all connected to that individual. We must understand productivity. God wanted the entire globe saved and he used one son. Productivity. Now he has gotten many sons in glory. The consumer mentality is the mentality that always believes in finishing what you have. Always believes in finishing what you have. It doesn't have to be finance, anything at all. The consumer mentality is the mentality that will always run dry. Always run dry. A mentality that never thinks increase, never thinks addition, never thinks multiplication. When you have a consumer mentality, when you come into the life of a man, you run that man dry. I don't mean a male figure, anybody at all. Are we together now? There are members with consumer mentality. They come to church and run the church dry. It doesn't have to be financially. Anything that comes from your life that does not add or increase is a consumer mentality great people are concerned with addition that because of your presence you become a multiplier factor 
are we together so your whole family is going down and here you show up and because of you something happens in that family and begins to multiply the greatest way to understand productivity is agriculture amazing how you can take a seed look up everybody you plant that seed are we together now and then you watch it that orange seed just give it a little time it grows the orange seed is not productive until it can hold orange enough are you seeing that now yes in spite of the wind that will blow some other seeds it has the stamina and a few months after maturity you begin to see oranges everywhere watch this you will pluck the oranges and after a while it will start again and you will pluck some more and there are orange trees and other fruit trees that are older than people the trees were there before they were born yet they will still eat of it that's productivity are we together now no man who is productive becomes poor no matter what babylon wants to do or not no matter what devil no matter what charm what cause productivity is not an idea for success it's a weapon productivity is a weapon a man of god who is productive will never have empty pews a church a ministry that is productive will never go down a business that is productive will never see shame the key is productivity the key is not wishing the key is not sentiments the key is productivity the ability to convert anything small to become big productivity the ability to introduce a multiplier factor I am productive who do I use come I am productive to the degree to which I can multiply this gentleman's value, his usefulness. That he comes as a naive young gentleman and I have access to his life. And in six months, in one year, I transform this person by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is productivity. Are we together now? Let me say this respectfully. Any pastor that does not cause the members to increase and to be productive in the days that will come will be ready for empty pews the days of solidarity based on tribe based on all this are over the determining factor for impact is productivity we come from the same village will soon be a joke we have the same auntie you are my elder brother i'm your younger brother no people are desperate he said that in the last days the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains and over the hills and the people will say let us flow although upwards but let us flow to that mountain are we together thank you what does productivity involve let's discuss this quickly Number one, the first key to productivity is healthy exposure. Write it down. The first key to productivity is exposure. Please, whether you are standing outside, whether what, if you can listen, listen. If you can write, write. What's the first key? It's impossible to be productive until your mindset is stimulated by a new horizon to life, to God, whatever it is. I was blessed by the testimony of that gentleman. One testimony you were all laughing around. When the guy was doing his best to articulate and piece together every spiritual intelligence. You, you, you can see the, don't feel bad my friend, but you can see the scarceness of his revelation and access. You can see that he's just throwing anything spiritual. But he said, I want to start from that kindergarten. Give that gentleman two, three months under the correct atmosphere and you will watch a young man rise that will surprise you. You will forget that he was once the person who just came and spoke here. Productivity. 
productivity. Anything that enters your hand multiplies. Anything that comes around your life increases. Are we together now? Everybody say exposure. Listen to me. Exposure is not a gift of the spirit. In fact, exposure is not even a gift of life at all. Exposure is a system where your horizon is expanded. Listen carefully. You will never rise beyond your mindset. I hope you know that. Zaria, hear me. Hear me. Hear me. This is one of the secrets of our limitation. We are limited. We are not bad. We are just limited. That all your life, you have known life to be a particular way. And so you do not know there is more to life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Most people, their exposure is negative. Party and all of that. That's, not, that's why I said healthy exposure. That means there's an unhealthy one. Listen to me. If God wants to lift you and cause you to be productive, the first miracle that happens to your life is he can either shift you geographically or give you access to an environment that begins to expand your understanding. He will introduce a person he will introduce a system or he will translocate you to a region where your mind begins to be adjusted. Listen to me. That's why sometimes you receive miracles you know you didn't pray for. God is breaking that cycle of limitation. There is no basis for receiving when you can. There are many people who cannot, God cannot even tell them certain things. It's not yet a concept that can be received. They don't have a system built within them to receive it. Please listen very carefully. Exposure. I believe is one of the reasons why the knot is very backward. I believe is one of the reasons why the middle belt is the worst part of it. Because our entire family, supported by a lopsided communication of Christianity, has stabilized our mediocrity and kept us within a plane that doesn't even make allowance for growth. Listen to what I'm telling you. The average middle belter, the average northerner, has an extra project to do in trusting God to break that circle first. Because it is so bad that the slightest show of exposure can even be attacked as extravagance. This is how bad this spirit is. Exposure. 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 The ability to expose you. When God finds out that there is nothing around you that can relate to it, he will translate you to the realm of the spirit and say, still see in any case, I need you to comprehend. That's what he did to Abraham. He kept telling Abraham, you will be a father of many nations. Abraham said, amen, like we're saying. And God said, I can't work with you. You are, you are empowering delay in your life. And then one time he said, Abraham, come out. You have checked around and there is nothing that looks like. Lift up your eyes. See. Count the stars. He had been looking at the stars, but he never tried counting them. I'm looking for something I can use to, to, to parallel what I want to do in your life. So count the stars. So he will start one, two, three, oh God. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, one, God is impossible. That's it. He says, so shall your seed be. I, I have I've planted something in you that you can now relate with. He says, and Abraham finally believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. Many times we do not have a basis for being blessed because we are limited. We came from a poor background. Now, I'm not insulting you, please. You are born to look like your parents, but you die looking like your decisions. Listen carefully. I understand that you came from a background that may not allow you to rise. But somewhere along your life, you must make up your mind. Unfortunately, many of us make up our minds in an unhealthy way. You just sit and say, this poverty, I'm tired. I must start hustling. You have missed it again. Hmm. Exposure. So, the young carpenter from Galilee. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And every time he went to pray, his horizons were expanding. 
You see what Satan did to Jesus? He took him to an exceeding high mountain and said, you have not seen this one, at least not in the flesh. He says, look at it first. Let me expand your mind. Good marketer. When he saw everything, he said, let me make this work easy. It was only a temptation because of what Jesus saw. If Jesus did not see anything, it can be a temptation. Are you getting what I'm teaching you tonight? Everybody say exposure. It is the reason why there is a lot of advancement and there is ease of establishment in areas like say Abuja or Lagos and all of that. Do you know why? Because the environment, sociologically speaking, and infrastructurally speaking is developed enough to subconsciously stimulate creativity so you are passing and there's a mall that challenges you and then they tell you this is a young man that owns it and subconsciously your mind continues to bank in challenges until you don't know when you sit down and say lord there has to be something about my life but in this environment no matter what level you are you are still a champion you see how bad it is before or after school, you are still better than many people. Before or after being born again, you are better than many people. You waste your money. They say, no problem, you are better than us. There is nothing that challenges you. So you need a healthy exposure. There are people in their life who never bought cars. And the day you say, we are trusting God for a car, they look at you. And say, what, what kind of nonsense is this? Must you live with a car? No, you mustn't, but it's better to have a car. Are we together now? Yes. Listen. One of the ways that Satan destroys men is to allow your mediocrity to reach the apex. Then he will now in, he will expose you by himself. That's why you can have a naive lady who never understood anything about life and a young guy can just come and carry her and say my dear let me tell you what this is let's go to a very big hotel or somewhere and she gets to eat a nice one and say what is this this is called this this is called that she doesn't know she's getting angry until she leaves that hotel and returns back home and the mother says ah it's ready help me pour water on the firewood let's let's just conserve it and suddenly there is an agitation but because it was wrongly done she will make up her mind that that experience, I will not rest. She will find a way of going back. Nobody sees something better and rests. When new wine comes, something begins to happen. The old wine becomes tasteless. It's how God expands us. Many of us have never seen the advantage of living a blessed life. You have never really seen a blessed, godly person around you. Please look up, look up, look up, look up. Don't, don't feel insulted, but many of us have not had models of correct, blessed believers. You have seen struggling believers. You have seen believers here and there who are a bit, they have today, tomorrow they don't have. You have not seen a portrait. So when the Bible says, blessed is the man that fears the Lord, there's nothing you can, you just, you just think it says, godly is the man. You know how your phone doesn't have some characters and when you send text messages, it will use something else to replace it. My brothers and my sisters, the mind only begins to conceive when there is a reference. There has to be something. That's the reason why men and women of God must challenge themselves, even on this wise, to become worthy references. A ministry that has a prophet will easily have prophets as members because they can see a man prophesy. A ministry that has a millionaire will usually have people. The possibility that you see before you is what you become. That's what Jacob did to the animals. He simulated what he wanted them to become. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Many of you have not seen the excellency of a blessed life. The only thing you have heard about a blessed man, rich men are crooks, rich men are stupid, rich men are obsessed with money. They are the ones who destroy our country. Rich men are corrupt people. And when you hear that kind of thing, your mind has pegged that as the definition of wealth. So God exposes you to a man who is blessed and loves God. 
and you are seeing a reality that is foreign to your experience. I thought all wealthy people hate God. I thought all wealthy people are indisciplined crooks. Here I'm seeing a man that loves God. Then you have the opportunity to see his offering. You have the opportunity to see his tithe. You have the opportunity to see his prayer and in it his righteousness endures. He will leave you with a mark. You will go back and say, Mama, I know we are in this hut, but there is a better life. Egypt, I know there's cucumber and there's carrots, but there is Canaan. Mama, there is Canaan. Let's trust God for grace. And in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to you. May you be the one to lift your family out of this land. Please sit down. Exposure. Exposure creates dissatisfaction in your heart. Are we together? You never knew that it was possible to pay a child's school fees beforehand. Because every time they paid your school fees, you were the last. You never knew that it is possible for somebody to not worry about money. It's not a reality that your mind can ever try to conceive. That there is such a realm where you sit down and the only thing that governs your appetite is the will of God. Not luck. Do you know and do you believe there is such a realm? Please listen to me. Such a realm where you are empowered to be a blessing. You get to a church and you see them struggling. Rain is hitting everyone. And you can just sign a check and say, please get canopies for these people. Let the name of the Lord continually be exalted. Let this not be what will discourage them. Your resources increasing even as your soul prospers. You cannot be productive until you see the advantage. There must be a system of recognition. You must see what it can do to you. Are we together? I never had the privilege to be around extremely wealthy people, just like most of us. Here and there, we had average people. Some of us came from families that were average here and there. But extreme levels of wealth. Notice that this is one of the reasons why many of us, our educational background is very poor till today. We are still fighting that warfare. Let me tell you where it started from. It started because of the kinds of nursery and primary schools we went to. You went to a school that you sat on stone. Now, I'm not insulting you. Are we together? Yes. A school where they teach in another language and they translate to you in whatever language you can know. Because that's what is obtainable. Are we together? How you pass your JSC is now that you know it was mercy and favor. Because you were certainly not ready. Now, let me tell you, if you come from that kind of background, you will be surprised. The first thing you have to manage is complex, not assimilation. The moment you find yourself in the company of other people, their confidence will intimidate you. You will have to fail for a long time before you start building. Your own assignment at that point is not even to understand what they are teaching. To manage your complex, just a question they ask you. Stand up and you cannot say your name again. You don't fail because you are bad. You fail because there is a backlog of something you are dealing with. Exposure is powerful. Exposure is powerful. The same way you grew spiritually because you were exposed to people who God had helped. Are you seeing that? When this ministry started by the grace of God, there were so many spiritual people. Someone would get born again in two weeks. Two weeks. When everybody is fasting, you won't have the grace to complain. When everybody is praying, you won't have the grace to be lazy. When there are programs and everybody is praying through the night, you will easily follow suit. Is that true? We are products of our environment. So God needs to grant us access to exposure. Now listen, I want to say something and please let it not hurt you. If for any reason you come from a polygamous family, or any kind of family for that matter that did not model correct fatherhood, correct motherhood, correct brotherly love, you have an extra project to do on yourself to trust God for grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me tell you this. 
Now, I love my father. I love him with all my heart and thank God for what he has become now. I say this respectfully. He's still alive, so I'm saying it very cautiously. But I love him, but I do not model his system of fatherhood, especially in his youth. That's because his own father died when he was 10 years. So he spent his entire life hustling. He grew up a bit with his uncle who was a soldier. He was a what? A military man. So what do you think? His whole template was warfare and aggression. That was what he termed progress. And now we happen to be the ones in the scene. And it was terrible. Especially being the first son. It was, it was a tug of war. It was almost like fight to fight between myself and my father everything was aggression you bring cold water for him to wash his hand he won't say you are wrong he will slap you you fall with the whole thing then you go to the kitchen and ask somebody they slapped before how did you manage that situation now please don't you ever see my father and my father is a born again loving man right now he's a healthy and wonderful man are we together now? Yes, I respect and I honor him with my life and forever. So don't, don't think that honor your father. I'm not just, he's, a, he's truly a good man. One of the most honest people I've seen in my life. But he was a victim. I have learned by experience that the concept of being bad does not really exist. Everybody is only an executor of his understanding. Because there is no bad dead body and there's no good dead body. There's only a dead body. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yeah. And so that life of aggression, exposure. I didn't want it, but that was all I had seen. And so subconsciously as I started growing, I found out that my approach to life began to reflect that. You don't receive willingly alone. Once you are exposed to a system for a long time, it becomes all you know. That's why most people that complain about leaders, when they get there, they do the same thing. Because while they were complaining, they were becoming it too. Remember Animal Farm? Literature students. That's exactly what happens to people. And so my life started reflecting that. I was unusually aggressive. I said, no, 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 no. Something has to happen to my life. Lord, this cannot be my life. Ah, Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. It's amazing to what degree we reflect the things that modeled our minds. Whether you like it or not is a different thing. Respectfully speaking, if your mother was a cook and you saw her stealing daddy's money and called it smartness, you will be surprised what you do when you enter a relationship. You can finish praying in tongues right now and while you are praying, you just see 1,000 protruding from a trouser and you would drag it and drag it in the name of the Lord. You are a victim. Everybody say exposure. Zaria people, listen to me. The internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitations of our territory. I repeat, the internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitation that comes with our territory. There are things we may never have seen and known but for the power of the internet. The internet is like a gun. You can use it to destroy yourself or you can use it to build. Many of us, it is the power of the internet that gave us access to messages, to people, to dimensions. Are we together now? Just like some of us, it's the internet that destroyed us and planted wrong seeds in our minds. You can remedy for your lack of exposure. If it is costly to fly physically, let your mind go there. Listen carefully. The most important ingredient in your exposure is not your body, it's your mind. So when your body cannot get there, don't feel bad. Find a way of taking your mind to that location. 
and this is where the internet becomes a blessing you don't have the privilege to attend a pastor's conference somewhere to bless your your yourself but your mind can go there remember i've taught you that when your mind gets somewhere your body must follow it doesn't matter what the resistance is yes you don't have the privilege to have been born in lagos you don't have the privilege to have been born in the u.s you don't have the privilege to have been born in any of the western worlds apostle i don't even know the name of my village the last time i checked i didn't exactly see it there that's not the issue your body may not be able to go there but god has orchestrated such that your mind can go there everybody around you was a bad father a wicked man a bad mother a wicked woman and god can just lead you to one 15 minute video on youtube that translates you into the home of somebody who can re-mentor you and start correcting your wrong ideologies everybody say exposure there's no excuse in our world today for remaining small even financially there is a system of exposure there is a system of exposure there is a system of exposure are we together number two thank you the second key to productivity please write it down is creativity and innovation creativity and innovation the second key to productivity remember i told you productivity is a weapon you don't just fight by prayer alone you don't just fight by fasting alone your productivity is a weapon as god is exposing you and exposing your mind you are fighting a warfare that you do not know it's a warfare for your destiny while you are exposing yourself you are exposing it for your children for your children's children and then number two creativity write this down what is creativity creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas imaginations and dreams into reality creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas your imaginations and your dreams into reality hmm. i saw this definition and it was so instructive it also involves the act of turning your um, transforming your ideas imagination dreams into reality full stop it also involves perceiving the world in new ways comma finding hidden patterns and making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena it involves perceiving the world in new ways finding hidden patterns making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena look up please the first manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the Bible was not as a revealer, but as a creator. There was darkness. Genesis chapter 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2 says, now the earth was dark and void and formless. Is the Hebrew word tohu abohu, confusion and chaos. And the Bible says the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters because creation recreation was about to start the first manifestation of the holy spirit was as a creative spirit and listen to me if you will conquer the king of tyre and if you will go up the mountain to bring wood and build the house of god then you must be creative the spirit of invention the grace that can birth realities from the realm of the spirit please hear me any man that is not creative in this generation will die of hunger or be at the mercy of those who are creators there is no reason for competition again creation is the key the ability to translate possibilities from the realm of the spirit please give us ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or imagine the word there is imagine it says according to the power that worketh in us 
creativity. Unfortunately, our generation of young people have been stimulated into mental sleep. Our creativity level in this generation is almost zero. Thank God for the curriculum they used to bring those days in primary school. Quantitative reasoning. And uh, what's the other one? Verbal reasoning. This, our lazy generation now doesn't even understand anything that stimulates the mind. I, I'm not being insulted, but you ask a graduate a simple question. Just something he can think about. I mean, it's not there at all. Creativity is zero. Zero. So we like doing things the way everybody has done. You just carry somebody's project and change your name and adjust figures. Change five to seven. Change this to and change address and stamp it straight to community market and present it. Creativity is zero. Many businesses. That's why when a business is wrong, many other businesses become wrong too because they don't think. They just copy. You must trust God for the grace. Listen to me. There is a level of creativity that can come upon you and bail your family forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. There is a spirit in man. Man is not an empty body. There is a spirit. And the inspiration, that's the word. From the word inspire. The word inspire does not just mean to prime. It means to magnetize, like you bring a magnet close to something and you cause another metal to shift because of the magnet. That's the idea of inspiration. That the Holy Spirit, the author of wisdom can come close to you. And in physics, we call it resonance. Let's, let's talk a little physics more. Resonance. Are we together now? Yes. That when you use a tuning fork and you hit at a frequency, every other object within that frequency begins to resonate. That's how it is. So the spirit of God comes and he does something to your spirit man and lifts you. He wants you to bet something. So he comes in that dimension and deep calls on to deep. You are seated in the room. There has to be a way. Lord, my family cannot just... I, I, listen, listen. I don't mean to be a prophet of doom. But let me tell you this. Robots are here to stay. That means jobs are already... Jobs are becoming like typewriter. Did you hear what I said? Jobs are becoming like what? Typewriter. Let's speak economics a little. Hear me. I'm speaking to you by the spirit of God. I'm speaking in the spirit of Noah. Telling you a flood is coming. Join this ark and join it fast. They laughed at Noah for 120 years. He kept telling them a flood is coming. There are more graduates in Nigeria than any level of development between now and the next 50 years can ever employ. Are we together? Masters is the new degree right now. You don't move around that you have a degree. Masters is the new, you go, they apply to a job looking for 80 people and about 12,000 people will write it. There are people who have finished since 15 years ago. They will eat first before it gets to your turn. So if you're a fresh graduate now, imagine that until 15 or 14 years, Babylon manipulating the system to make sure the saints cry. But there is a way, there is a spirit in man. Listen to me carefully. The, the employment in any nation is private sector driven. There is no nation that the government handles their employment. No. Government has only limited parastatal. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And because they are working on cutting costs, usually they will make sure that as much as possible they cut costs. The employment rate in any nation is private sector driven. That means the more businesses you have, the more entrepreneurs you have, then they can be able to absorb people. Unfortunately, technology and information has replaced men. There is no reason why I should employ 1,000 people when I can employ five people and five computers. 
737 of GT Bank alone made sure it blessed people one of their most successful products but with that many people may never get a job again because it was very efficient every businessman does business for profits I hope you know bank is business bank is not government property it's somebody's business look at graduates now all around there is nothing because there is a system and please listen to what I'm saying because when a father does not have something that brings resources and mother does not have something that brings resources they will both suffer and the children will suffer listen for the sake of your children my brothers and my sisters don't listen just for yourself let us read ourselves of this selfishness it doesn't matter it doesn't take very long before your child comes and then the reality will dawn on you and while that is happening satan is manipulating the economy to make sure the prices of things go high it's a double-edged sword so that whatever direction you come from you will be attacked listen the average salary within this system is not more than 20 to 30 thousand listen carefully am i telling the truth there are only few places that can employ people in zaria let me use Zaria. I'm talking to the whole world, but please permit my bias. Let me just address my people a little bit. The average salary is twenty to 30000 Anything more than that is uh, until you have any federal government thing. And we know, no matter how careful you are in this life, twenty to 30000 will not do you anything. No matter how stingy and greedy and even wicked, 20000 will not be enough. Even if you are a thief, you will need more than that to steal. Calculate the amount to buy weapons, dress, and it's more than that already. So no matter how you go around it, you are still in trouble by default. Now watch this. So you have a family of 10 people. How many people? Minus father or mother. And then one person out of the six graduates now manages to get a job of 20,000. And everybody saying, oh, yeah, oh, now that God has blessed you, we were there for you. 20,000 divided by 10. So why won't your prayer life be affected? Why will you be able to pray? Where will you get the resources to marry? No, not marry watch this where will you get the resources to marry I'm, I'm being sincere with you marriage in Nigeria at any level is not cheap are, are we together now don't blackmail any territory marriage everywhere today is not cheap you want to marry you are discouraged yourself the wife is discouraged herself your destiny is, is hanging in the balance because nothing... Remember, you are born again. Remember, you are filled with the Spirit of God. And Satan says, exactly, this is how I want to manipulate the economy. Please listen, my brothers and sisters. I'm telling you this thing to bail you out so that you will have time. By the time this happens, members are not able to bring offerings, not able to bring tithe. And that means that projects cannot be executed and the man of God himself is stranded. So he has to invent another ungodly way. Are you getting it now? By manipulation. Remember, he didn't plan to be bad. The pressure, the rent on the auditorium, the rent on all of this. There are bills to pay, TV ministry. And he has to invent another theology that can supply. the solution and I speak to you by the spirit of prophecy is creativity listen to me creativity and innovation there is a spirit in man my brothers and sisters there is a spirit in man there are men and women that must arise let us not pray in tongues for nothing we are not just praying in tongues to throw one another on the ground the world does not understand that language. The language that conquers Babylon is bringing something that dumbfounds principalities and powers. Even Paul got to a place where it was his being a Pharisee. 
his exceptional quality of knowledge that bailed him out. Right now, everybody laughs at the church because it looks like the church is a place for daft people and idiots. People who don't have any brain. Is that true? The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of prayer. The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of fasting. The spirit of revival is the grace for witty inventions, uncommon manifestations of the hand of God. Listen, let me tell you this. Listen to me. Let me say this, and I, I, I don't know if I will sound proud, but please forgive me. Forgive me. When I started banking, I was taught that there are certain transactions you cannot do until you are there by yourself to sign your signature. As God increased me, I found out that it's not true. That rule was only for some people. Are you getting the point now? There are transactions today that I do that the bank manager himself is the one that does it. Now listen very carefully. I'm not saying this to boast. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm telling you when you are at the edge of creativity, there are rules that will be broken for you and your children. I told you about BVN. I didn't have the time to do BVN. I needed to do BVN in the bank and the, you know the queue, I told them, I said, I don't have this time. And they gave me time, 8.30. I went to the bank and they opened the bank for me. I sat down and did BVN. Is there anything, sir? Would you, are you happy? Would you like a drink? I said, ah, look at how unfair life can be. Listen to me. This is not some boasting or bragging. I want you to be apostolic in your understanding. This is not about money at all. This is about your soul and the gospel. Are we together now? Yes. Let us not keep our children in captivity, my brothers and my sisters. Standing between your parents and your children is you. We are that bridge. You can transfer what you received or you can say, Lord, let me be the one to suffer it. Let my child not go through what I've gone through again. And God says, are you willing to be this savior for your family? And you say, Lord, I'm available. Are we together now? Please hear what I'm saying. Nobody will ever be coerced or manipulated in this ministry to bring one naira for anything to happen in the gospel. No, 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 no. It will be wicked. And only a wicked man of God will continue to receive seeds from people and they continue to bless him and not be this is this is where sincerely speaking i have a little challenge with we men of god we continue to receive and collect from people but never empower them is wickedness it's a scam do you know how available people will be when they are financially free financial freedom will help you know that there are not many things to be done in life most of the distraction is the pursuit for money. It is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep. It's impossible to, pay, to pray three, four, five hours every day when your pocket is crying. It's not true. Not in this country. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. Yahweh, Yahweh. creativity 
creativity creativity that God will anoint people to be creative do new things or old things in new ways that you set a pace my brothers and my sisters let no man deceive you that there is poverty in Zaria no it's just that the avenue to find expression is smaller but there are opportunities beyond your imagination Every day, millions of Naira continue to exchange hands in this city by only a few people. Creativity. Creativity is not in the realm of men. You don't get creativity through education. Creativity is of the spirit. There is a spirit in man. What were you filled with the Holy Ghost for? There is a spirit in man. Jesus revealed a new way of saving men. Until then, we use the blood of bulls. But Jesus came and showed us that the price can be paid once and for all. Never did they know that the Holy Ghost could come and stay on men. He would come and go. But a new thing came. He said, behold, I do a new thing. Remember not the former things. Listen. The instrument of survival in our generation today will be the spirit of creativity. The grace for uncommon inventions. I'm telling you this. Noah warned, just like I'm warning. Noah warned, just like I'm warning. And told them the rain is coming. I tell you there is a financial holocaust that is hitting people. The Bible says it. That the earth of men will be brass and under will be iron. But there are people who will be preserved. A remnant that will be preserved. I came out this morning. I usually don't come out. And I decided to just come out in the afternoon. I didn't know it was this hot. When I came out and the, way, the, the sun, it was so serious. I just stood and I looked. I said, my God. And I said, this is my message, oh Lord. This is exactly what is going to happen to people. Think of what happens when you stand in the sun for long. Headache, pain. Yet there are people who will have to be exposed to those things. And do you know the pain? When you hold all your children together and say, Junior, stand in this sun with me. And Junior is saying, is this how life was meant to be? And Satan now looks at him and says, Junior, come. There is a way out. And Gino says, Daddy, since you cannot provide, you are not a father. Our children will be more audacious than us. Their generation has made them audacious. So if you are a father, you will have to be a father indeed. A mother indeed. Otherwise, we will lose our children. And the law courts have been empowered to make sure you cannot take care of the child. They say, let's take care of your child. Meaning whatever we teach him, provided we are the ones feeding him. No government will feed my child in the name of Jesus. No. No. I reject it. Koinonia will never stand in front of any government office waiting to receive welfare at the expense of the gospel, at the expense of the truth. But this will be a blind, foolish boast until you understand the power of creativity. Listen very carefully. God is teaching us something tonight that will save us. Exposure. Creativity. The mind that thinks. The mind that works. Spirit inspired mind. The mind that can bet solutions from the realm of the spirit. Bet solutions. I was sharing with someone this afternoon. Of a woman that used to make, I don't know what she makes now. 500,000 in Abuja here. Jobs did not come and everything did not come and she was praying and God gave her an idea. And she went and met certain families that she can teach their children well. And she's not doing a general extra moral lesson. It's a VIP extra moral lesson. And it started like two children, three children, right in her house. And those students were behaving exceptionally well. But more than that, she was teaching them character character and then she will play koinonia messages too these children were changing in remarkable ways 
and the parents started recommending their circle of influence. That's always what happens when you penetrate one circle. They will call the others like them to you. And like play, like play, this woman would collect 10,000 naira per month. As at the time that I was talking with her, she had like 50 children. Only God knows how much she has now. The gates of destiny will not open on its own. You force it. He said right from the days of John the Baptist and until now, the kingdom suffered violence and it's the violence that will take it by force. The spirit of invention. Listen to me. If you stay with the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, let something from the throne room come upon my mind for my generation. God can put something on your mind, something on your mind and change your life. Change your life. I saw a picture on the internet one day. The person's cloth, they wrote $400. Then his, his tie, they wrote $20. And then his head, they wrote $0. Are we together? That's a picture of our generation. Packaging. And there is nothing from the realm of the spirit. And I told you that resources only follow productivity. Is God blessing us? I'm already very proud and happy about many of us that God is granting grace. Not just to hustle, but to think. This, this praying in tongues must translate into blessing everything. up. It's not only power to shake. No. It must come upon your mind. Please lay your heart on your head in the next two, three minutes. And I'd like you to pray. And say, Lord, let something come from heaven. Zakatoske parakata from heaven, oh God. A creative idea from the throne room that I will have the boldness and the courage to execute that will change my life. Please pray, please pray. Sabra nekatala koto sasiata. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Creativity. Everybody writes books, but there is a way that God can anoint you to write one book in a certain way. And that book will bless people creativity. Koinonia messages today are blessing people because of the power of creativity. God gave an instruction and said, while people, the regular way is to have message stands at the end of a service and come and pick up. And God says, no, I will do it differently. Don't sell the teachings. I'm not saying selling teachings are wrong. But he said, just put them on, on Facebook. And the angel of the Lord will take them to nations. That one creative idea. There are ladies here, you can have a creative idea. Listen, when you solve the problem of kings, you will eat with them. You solve, you will eat with whatever level. Whoever's level you solve their problem, that's the, the realm you will eat at. Listen, there are some of you here, God can anoint you and put grace on you. You will design clothes that will, the person who will call you to surprise you. You will just hear a call and they will say, who is this? You say, come. Are you the one who brought this design? Come. It's not about many customers. It's about quality people. There are men that represent nations. Listen, listen. I want you to start solving the problem of kings. You have done well to solve the problem of mean men. That God will empower you to solve the problem of kings. 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 Gentiles have already come to your light. It's time for their kings to come. Their kings to come. Is it not in the Bible that kings will entreat your favor? Kings. Kings. 
that God will put something on your mind. On your mind. Grace. I heard about somebody. Please sit down. We'll soon pray. Sit down. I heard about a gentleman. True story. And I was sharing it with someone this afternoon. He sat down and this guy was going through a lot of pain. And he kept praying and crying before God. And the next thing he saw a mowing machine. Machine that cuts grasses. And he had some little savings. And he went and bought it. When he bought it, he went to knock the gate of a very wealthy man who has a big land. And say, sir, I'm a young man. I'm a graduate. It's just that I didn't have um, any, you know, no employment. And I just bought a machine. I know that there are young boys that cut grasses, but my machine, I can mow it down and then pack everything. And the man looked at him and laughed and said, I'm impressed. These are the kind of men I want. You're welcome. Come in. And he came in and mowed the man's grasses. He was so well. And he told him that not only the grasses, I can also trim the flowers. Listen, the person I'm telling you today is a millionaire. He deals in everything that has to do with it. He bought these machines. They mow houses for wealthy people and then they sell flowers flowers they to the point that he even imports certain varieties from a crying graduate to a praying one and something comes from heaven and changes your life for as long as we sit down and continue to tell ourselves one day you go better my brothers and my sisters let me tell you you will find out that time is going and the only thing increasing in your life is your age are we together i know a woman a dear precious woman in lagos every time i have the privilege to go there and around that ministry i'm very quick to order her her products health drinks completely organic 100 percent, because the need to live long and live healthy you see when you are poor is not a concern because the work you do will not even allow fats to remain in your body and all of this but by the time god helps you small you find out that at a level is a serious concern and this this woman started selling health drinks and you know beautifully packaged and only God knows how much she makes. There's a lady from Joss, a precious lady. She may be listening now. She came for Koinonia here with a product. She worked for somebody and came and God gave her ideas, a combination for weight loss, healthy, organic weight loss products that is cheaper and affordable, 100% organic. And that lady blessed. I saw it. I was so impressed. When I went to Joss, I told the lady, I said, put it and take it and go and give my parents let them take it and let them be blessed the goal is not far from you when the spirit of creativity comes on you you will see what others don't see it's true anything can bless it depends on how it is served are we together there's one mama that sells kunu. Kunu, sorry for those of you who are not in the north. It's a drink, a local, you know, drink that we take a lot here. I tell you, there's a woman that sells that and the way she does it. Even, you know, sometimes you just want to get all of these things and she can supply you whether a gallon or whatever it is. Please, my brothers and my sisters, lay your hand on your head again and command creativity to work for you. Rebuke laziness rebuke excuses there has to be a way out of it the warfare that is executed through creativity only creative men can survive upon that mountain there is a way out there is a way out there has to be a way out of struggling hallelujah Please sit down. Let me tie it up somewhere so that we'll round up for tonight. Creativity. Creativity. The third key to productivity. One is exposure. Two is creativity and innovation. Number three is competence. You want to be productive. The third key is competence. 
the ability to standardize your results hmm. competence the ability to standardize your results maintain quality predictable quality predictable quality anything that comes from you has a predictable expectation i know if you're a lesson teacher i already know what a child will get because you are there if you are a chef i already know the food cannot be delicious today and nonsense tomorrow you are not competent competent is a product of mastery the mastery of the laws that govern that operation predictable competence listen to me when your results are not standardized kings will not come to you kings do not come to a fluctuated result stability for kings mean mastery so when you stabilize and standardize your results whether spiritually intellectually or otherwise you call the attention of kings the leaders in any industry are men who have standardized their results you cannot keep fluctuating forever as a man of god as a businessman as a career person there must be a level of standardized results everybody say competence mm. be strict on yourself set a high standard on yourself don't celebrate mediocrity just because you do something small challenge yourself think global think global think global you can start small but let your mind be global are we together I was listening to one of Dr. Miles Munro's mentees and he was sharing a story that when Dr. Miles was alive, he looked at him one day and he called his name and he says, young man, you have a fabulous grace. You are charismatic, but you are not, you are not vocal and articulate. And if you want to go into the communications industry, you have to be vocal and articulate. The gentleman came from a background of all these yo-yo boys. And so they just speak slangs all around. And he said, no, if you want to talk to presidents and talk to great people, you want them to call your attention, then you must pay the price to learn. And he says, wow, he was touched. And he made up his mind that he was going to take an extra program to work on himself. He went that far. And that gentleman today, is the one who heads Miles Monroe's church, Dr. Burroughs. He made up his mind that he was going to develop himself. Learn to delay gratification and insist until you are competent. Don't wear tomorrow's cloth today. You walk naked tomorrow. Don't eat tomorrow's food today. You will die of hunger tomorrow. Don't be ashamed of rising gradually, but insist, insist. I got to find out that a number of our precious ladies here are fashion designers. And for one of them, when I got to see what she does, I was blown away. I was, I was, so, I was impressed beyond imagination. I said, you mean you do this? She said, yes. I said, no, if this is what you do, then the sky is your limit. The world needs to know that you do this. Listen, let me tell you. When you are competent, don't be afraid to let the world know that I am here. You bring embarrassment to yourself and all those who are connected to you when you have not done your assignment and then you are calling the attention of the world. The fig tree had no fruit, but it was calling the attention of Jesus. When Jesus came hungry, he cursed it. That's what will happen to any man that calls the attention of the world when you are not ready. But when you are ready and you've done your homework, please stand tall and tell the world that with all humility, God has put something here. Come and see. That's why we boldly open up and we tell people, God is doing something great in Zaria. Come and see. When I travel by the grace of God to go for ministrations, I go with confidence. I know that the people will never be the same. Because the message is powerful 
and there is grace that backs the message. There's nothing the devil will do about it forever. That's why I continue to train and challenge you. My brothers and my sisters, when you become competent, the kings of Zaria will call you. When you become competent, you can be in Zaria and the kings of Abuja will call you. The kings of everywhere will call you. They have not called you because they are still studying you and they are noticing the fluctuations around your result. Standardize your results and watch the desperation of kings. Is God speaking to us? Be competent. Don't be small. Oh, I'm a chef. I'm a chef. What do you do? Just because you can eat your food does not mean that's the food of kings. Challenge yourself. Are we together now? One time, a great man was celebrating his birthday and they just thought to make him a nice cloth. And my tailor was called upon and told to sew for that man. A very, very big and wealthy man. And then he was encouraged to do a good job. And I'm sure he may be listening now. And when he sewed the clothes for that man, from that time, that man started calling him. Now he asked him, I heard recently again, to make another set of clothes. Let me tell you, competence is addictive. When people meet competent people, they don't easily let them go. No, there are not many competent people in the world. You can only complain for a while, you will come back. Be so competent that you become an endangered species. I remember years ago, a dear woman was getting married in Zaria and she went to bring in a, a what they call these people that makeup artist from Kano. And I asked a question. I said, does that mean there is not one of my dear people here that is an exceptional makeup artist who will like you to ruin her face on her wedding day? The wedding day is not the day of trial and error. If you are not competent, provable competence, kings and queens will not call you. Listen, when you become competent, you can name your price and the world will still say thank you. Is God blessing you? Competence. You need to shake off poverty. Don't just sit down and say, oh God, um, now that the job is not coming or what I read. No. God is giving you a mind that can sit down. Listen, Koinonia, I told you that I will never pastor a people who are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit but poor and broke and mediocres. I will not be that man of God. For as long as you are under this grace, you must be balanced and that includes your finances. I trust God for times when by the grace of God, your children can come and at age 10, they are happy. They are focusing on matters of destiny. You are not waiting for them to become 18 years fast so that they will marry and come and pay you back. This is the place of encounter. That's what God is doing in your life tonight. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place. Where your life is changed. Do to me what you want. Listen. Some of us, our parents may have failed. But turn them into a success by being successful. So that they can say my assignment was to give birth to you. And since I gave birth to you, I may have failed in every other thing. But because you arrived successfully, your success has turned me back to a success. The mother of Jabez called him Jabez because of sorrow. I don't know what else she called him when he, become, he became an honorable man. There are names that are given to you when you are blessed. Your parents will find names and coin names that represent the excitement you have created in their spirits. 
Are we together? Being in Zaria is not a cause. Being in the north is not a cause. Being a Nigerian is not a cause. And the secret is not running to Canada. The secret is not running to Europe. There are people under bridges in all of these nations. It is the grace that follows you and the intelligence that God gives you. Are we together? By the time we are building our international headquarters, these are, there are people here that will single-handedly by the Spirit of God say, Apostle, look, we are writing this. Let this not be an issue. Not moral support. No. That people like here who will be so blessed and sign a million Bibles and say, please take them to the Northeast. Noiseless impact. Are we together now? There are many of our children in this ministry. Some of them, you see them come, and many of them is only God that supplies for their daily bread, and is only God that takes care of them. When will God bless you to a point that one day you look at one child and say, young man, you were about to fall, but because I came. Ah, I am alive that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you came you know your impact by what people do around your birthdays that you have to remind people that it's your birthday is a sign that your destiny is closed people should be excited and know that my God this blessing to my life what an opportunity to celebrate him. There are people today, you still look at their grave and their grave is a sermon. You can stand on their grave and live inspired. He came, he saw, he conquered. Productivity. The ability to trust God for an innovative spirit. Listen. Listen. Turn your ideas to products and services. You are only worthy of reward when your ideas become products and services. Served with excellence until they become products and services, you are only worthy of commendation, not reward. I cook once in a while. I'm very good, but that's just how I am. Hey. That means that the financial squalor that is coming will meet up with you. I don't know what the best restaurant in this city is. I don't know. But I thank God that there are people rising already. Here and there. It is my goal and my prayer that the best of the best of the best of the best of every level of productivity will come out from this house. It's not in a competitive manner. Listen, one of the benefits of productivity is the privilege of influence. The moment you are productive and you lead a field, you are given grace to mentor, to build, to set the rules that guide the understanding of other people. And this is one of the keys to kingdom advance. You never become influential as a mediocre. It is when you, when you set the standard and you lead the field. Are we together? You must challenge yourself. I vowed a vow to myself while preparing for this meeting. I said, Apostle, you have not started. Oh, you have not started. The trickles of results that God has given, praise God for it. But Mr. Man, it's time to get to gear two and do something higher and greater. It is time for a certain levels of graces. I was praying and I said, Lord, give me the anointing for three diseases. One, cancer. Two, HIV. We have seen it in pockets, but I mean that a signature upon your life. Hmm. This is what money cannot buy. Lord, grant that grace. Let it not be by mistake again. 
I don't want people to come and testify and say I was healed of cancer. Apostle laid hands and I said, I'm not even sure. No. I want a realm where we know that you came here and we can smile and say, Mr. Man, dust your vision. Put your books back in order because you are walking away free. There is a grace. It's not out of jealousy or a need. No, 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 no. It is how you become a blessing. And then kings will come to you and say, our money means nothing in the face of this situation. And you tell them, there is a system in this kingdom that can help men. The little grace that God has given me, I am blessed and humbled as I see it change the lives of people. When people come with situations that I know are within the grace that God has given me, I'm excited. I, I feel happy for them because I know they are coming back with a testimony. If that does not happen to you, what kind of man of God do you want to become? When you become a conventional man of God, you will be a competitive man of God, a jealous man of God, an angry man of God, and eventually a backsliding man of God. But there is a height, an exceeding high mountain where God keeps you. And from that mountain, you can tell people, look at what Jesus can do. Say, don't mention Jesus. Say, that's all I know. And they say, if we drive him, we're in trouble. So we have to leave you there. And you shout it at the rooftop. We we'll raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. That's the anthem of our generation. Productivity, the ability to be useful, the ability to be needed, the ability to force a space for yourself for the sake of the kingdom in the table of destiny. You may not have been born with that privilege, but my brother and my sister, let me tell you this. There are men and women who did not have any advantage, but they made up their minds that they will challenge themselves. That out of Zaria, God will spring forth something that will shift this nation. Men and women who defy unemployment. Men and women who defy mediocrity. And your productivity will open the gates and the king of Tyre will watch you and you will pass and sit on that mountain and call forth nations to come and they will come. Listen to me. We are going to have a few minutes to pray. And just where you are, I'd like you to pray. Are we together now? Worship team, just give us, just play something for us. And then you pray. You are going to cry for your destiny. Tonight's prayer, you are not interceding for anybody. You are saying, Lord, there has to be something uncommon in my life. I'm tired of mediocrity. I'm tired of having what everybody has. It is the reason for jealousy. It is the reason for envy. Lord, put something upon my life. Something uncommon. Are you ready to pray? Expose my mind. Grant me the grace to be creative. Grant me the grace to be competent.
pray. Sabarakata Senebakata. The earnest expectation of creation. I waited the manifestation of sun. No excuse for poverty. No excuse for failure. No excuse for mediocrity. Lord, I cancel those excuses tonight. I cancel those excuses. I cancel those excuses. I have a mind that thinks. I have a spirit that can think. There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty can make men of understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to cause the spirit of laziness. Laziness. Physical laziness. Mental laziness. Whatever will be, will be. I'd like you to receive the spirit of aggressive pursuit. Aggressive pursuit. One door closes, you force another one to open. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of giving excuses. Outside, pray. Inside, pray. Those following online, pray. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. We are praying two more prayer points and we are done. I believe in diversification, but I also believe in mastery. You are going to pray, Lord, what is that one thing? The area you want me to be a master in. Incontestable, unarguable. Reveal to me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, is it agriculture? Lord, is it finance? Is it in my career? Is it in the academia? I cry for the spirit of revelation. Show me, oh God, the one thing that will set me apart and bring honor to your name through my life. Please pray. Concentrate and pray. Concentrate and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up, please. One book that was written by T.D. Jakes, Woman Thou Art Loose, one idea from heaven. He wrote that book and it changed his life and set precedence for a conference that is one of the premier world conferences today for women. One book, Purpose Driven Life, that a man wrote, changed and turned his life around. One idea called Uber in an app that was invented far away from Africa is working like fire here in Africa. What if God gives you the cure for AIDS? What if, do you know that I found out that there is no sickness on earth now that does not have a medical cure? I mean that has been found. HIV is not incurable. I mean medically. I, I'm not pleased with due respect to the medical council and all the medical people these are my personal opinions i'm not speaking on behalf of the ministry nor am i speaking on behalf of the nation i'm telling you by spiritual revelation and by intelligence that there is a cure for it there is a cure for cancer 
there is a cure for all these things the only problem is that those who have found the cure have not learned the systems and because you belong to a harsh world and a harsh environment that this most of these things were in many respects intentionally manipulated to victimize Africa so an individual that rises like that will be fought over but there are cures not one not two I have spoken personally with people that have these cures let me tell you sincerely praise the Lord the question I'm asking you is I know you want God to bless you but could it be that the devil that needs to go out today is not the one in your village is the one that has stayed in your mind like a stronghold the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to what the pulling down of strongholds casting down every yazar imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ praise the Lord so we have been given a poverty mentality as Africa we have been taught that until you are 25 or 30 don't think about finances don't think about blessing don't think about empowerment and you are told that you are too young to carry the power of god or you are a lady you shouldn't carry the power of god these are the ideologies that cosmos markets to us but you must refuse it say i refuse shout it i refuse, I refuse. Mm. you must refuse it you must refuse it who told you you were naked who told you you were naked I honor the doctors but do you know that there are many people who are, who have several sicknesses but it never affects them because they do not have a medical report to validate it you went to check headache they said my brother this thing is more than headache well, I, you mean you would have died now we have a lot of doctors here doctors I love you praise the Lord but now when you check and they tell you huh, do you know that your liver is almost in fact you say you, you mean it Hi. from that time your liver starts paining you physically right and then the doctor tells you you have two weeks to live all of a sudden somebody says there's an opportunity God is lifting us they let him lift you there I'm dying I believe the report of the Lord I believe the report of the Lord see listen you don't see with your eyes you see through your eyes there is a spiritual agency for sight you only see through these physical eyes it's not what you see with they are just the physical components that enable your true spiritual eye to see and Paul prayed that that eyes be flooded with light praise the Lord So we need alignment. That's why you can pray for people. Pray for them. Lay hands on them. Do whatever you want to do. Did you know that sometimes you finish praying and then the people walk right back because their mindset betrays what God wants to do in their lives. That's what happened to the nation of Israel. Right? Everything you have told Moses we will do oh, after two weeks. They say, Kai! A, a delegation comes and they say Moses we, we need an explanation go and bring Baal make something for us that we can see this mysterious God who comes with smoke we don't know this one please make something we know they limited God in the wilderness a man's mindset can limit God as mighty as he is I refuse to limit you I refuse number three the word of God, an encounter with the word of God shows you your part of the deal. It shows you the part you have to play to commit God to a performance. Never forget this. There is a part that you have to play, brothers and sisters. Every promise in scripture requires a partnership on your own part. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. It says, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? And then it talks about um, you 
being exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if there is a condition isaiah 1 19 if ye be willing and obedient you will eat the good of your, the land not if ye be hungry and desperate if ye be what willing and obedient there is a condition there is a condition there are always conditions so an encounter with the word reveals to me my part of God's prosperity package. Lord, you want to bless me. What is my role? Right? I want to step into levels of the anointing. The word of God shows me. is See, reading the word is like walking in your promised land. It says walk left and right. See everything as far as your eyes have seen. So you read, studying the word of God is like pouring your promised land and you come back and say lord as i read i found this and that and god says all right here's the condition everything is yours for taking you can enter a restaurant immediately you enter the restaurant you see a lap of an ugly chicken and you start smiling but you came there with 100 naira there is a condition you want to be a possessor you want to make that thing become a present reality there is a price tag nobody stops you there's no policeman to stop you but you can watch it like a museum and salivate and watch right and nothing happens you may be 30 years but a little baby will come with his father and he say mommy i like this and whatever he likes keep giving it to him the container did not refuse to open your part I know you are laughing because I spoke about food, but get the revelation because the issue in your life is more than food. Praise God. Oh God, change my story. God says, come, let me show you your part of the deal. He said, God, I don't want you. You have died for me. Mm -mm. Listen, listen, listen. Making the word of God work in your life, making that which he has done to work in your life, Will require a participation on your own part. Please understand this. Praise the Lord. Are we following? So these three things. Tonight, as you are seated here, there are some of us, the reason why certain levels of breakthrough have not come into our lives is because we have not been able to support our claims in prayer with a basis. You have, you have always every power challenging me. You better leave. Because of what? Why should they leave? Do you know what brought them in the first place? They were there before you were born. So I came to Koinonia. Every demon, I'm tired of you. <laughs> That's not what drives them. You, you don't, they don't go because you are tired. 38 years, that man was lying down at a pool. That wicked spirit did not say, Kai, 37, 38. Oh yeah, let me allow you. You have tried. You would have remained there forever. In five minutes. Five minutes. Meaning time does not change anything. Light is what changes things. It will change tomorrow. You are wasting your time. Arise and shine. Not because you are tired of sitting. Isaiah 64. Thy light is come. Hmm. Are you getting blessed? So there are some of us here. What you need is to understand a revelation of what Jesus Christ has done. You think the reason why you may get everything is because you are bold or because you are afraid. It's not that. There is a revelation. The blood of Jesus. For years I had Reinhard Bonke talk about the blood of Jesus so much. He, he equated blood and fire. And I didn't, I couldn't quite get it. Until I found out that blood was a key in the spirit. That's why every religion has blood as part of their company. This is the one factor that every religion agrees upon. Blood. Hallelujah. And there are some of us here. The problem is our mindset. God wants to bless us. He wants to lift us. But there is a mindset. Oh, I'm a lady. Oh, I'm coming from so so and so. I cannot even speak English. Oh, this and that and that and that. I've not even gotten admission. Or, oh, me, I just want a little this. Oh, I made that and that. Huh? Oh God, I want you to bless me, but it must happen through NMPC. If you are Lord, it must happen through NMPC. They limited God. You are asking God for a cup and he wants to give you an ocean. Hallelujah. That's the problem with the body of Christ. 
Our faith is what I call auxiliary faith. Faith that is standing on something. Tied to the neck of your uncle. So every time you say, Lord bless me, what you mean is press that uncle's neck until he responds to me. Your faith is not really standing upon the word of God. Your faith, every time you say, Lord, I, 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 I know you are changing my story. What you are simply saying, oh Lord, I know my uncle will not sleep until my... No, no, no. Why don't you give him the option to bring the strategy? And you say, Lord, I don't care how it will be done. I may not see wind. I may not see rain. But one thing I know. Because let me tell you, your strategy is most of the time carnal. But his strategy becomes spiritual. When he gives you a strategy, it may look foolish. But that's the way he has chosen it. Right? Go around Jericho. That's the strategy. Oh, I'm already ahead of myself. The second way to receive a miracle or the second platform now. First is an encounter with the word of God. Second is the ministry of prayer. The ministry of prayer is part of the equation to receiving a miracle. There must be the ministry of prayer. It does two things. Number one, prayer challenges the forces of darkness fighting against the manifestation of the promise in your life. Ephesians 6 verse 12. The Bible clearly tells us that we are not alone in this world. We have strangers who are trying to escort us every day, every time. Wicked spirits stratified in different cadres. Right? So you are always not alone. The devil attempts to seek entrance into different dimensions of your life and given the opportunity he will wreck your life the goal to mock the testimony of god in your life praise the lord so there are giants on every mountain please don't let anybody fool you there are giants on every mountain if you get into a mountain and the door is already open somebody already killed the giants but there were giants there for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. The stratification of the demonic kingdom. So between you and your breakthrough, there are giants. It takes the ministry of prayer. Hallelujah. When you pray, you authorize heaven to look into your situation. Because God is not committed to step into your situation without your asking him to. Genesis 1 26 from the day he said let them have dominion but God is supposed to know now doesn't he love me well it will not change the bones kept staring at Ezekiel until something happened praise the Lord you come for miracle service and you find out that as the word is coming like this there are still people seated oppressed of demons right some of these demons are hearing what I'm saying now they are just shaking but they are not going yet let's see if we will go must we really go yes by the time we begin to pray we activate the energy the force right it's a force of compliance it brings everything to the obedience of christ so that's why you need to pray you pray to command the forces of darkness that are stopping your access to bow Number two, this is an even greater reason why we pray. Prayer reveals the exact and the unique strategy to bring the promise to manifestation. Please never forget this. When you pray in the place of prayer, God reveals to you his unique strategy for you. So you have walked through scripture and you have seen that God has told you that you are to walk in breakthrough. But now, the Bible may not give you the nitty gritty of what to do in your unique situation. Prayer. When you begin to pray, the Spirit of God begins to search the mind of God concerning your situation. And the Bible says how that he searches all things and he prays according to the will of God. So you begin to pray and then the Lord tells you, okay, now this is the strategy. You are going to meet Benga. Benga will introduce you to Femi. And Femi will introduce you to prof. That's how the miracle will come. It is a strategy for only you. Somebody will do it and fail. Are you seeing why prayer is powerful? This is, this is, am I blessing you? In my opinion, I think this is already a miracle for somebody. I'm showing you the loopholes. Some of us have seen the promise. You have agreed with God. 
But the problem is the strategy. In ancient times, kings won war not on the strength of their army, but the dexterity of their strategy. Strategy, strategy, strategy. So Joshua stood still and God began to give him the strategy. He said, Joshua, this is how we we'll throw this wall down. Walk around seven times. Did you ever see that repeated in the Bible? Because it was a strategy. Right? He told Gideon, take the people by the riverside and let them take water. Study the way they take water. You will use it as a separation. Strategy. Somebody has come tonight to receive strategy. Lord, how do I complete this house? You calculated your salary based on your salary to take 10 years. And God says, I can show you a strategy. The Bible says, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. A wicked king slept in the night, dreamt and forgot it and was going to punish people for his forgetfulness. Right? And a man called Daniel. One of the greatest prayers that have been praying in this season is Lord's strategy. It is all about strategy. I'm telling you. God will show you something that does not make sense. But it's his strategy for you. Everyone will do it and fail. But it's what you will do. And you will walk on. Hallelujah. So you look at that business and you are praying. And God will say, uh -uh, my strategy for you is take that business out of where you are. Take it to another place. Isaac already knew he had the blessing upon him. But he needed a strategy right that's why every time kings would fight they would go and inquire what is the strategy for this war they will not use yesterday's strategy for today's war they will fail woefully and so they'll go should i pursue and the lord will say this is how it will happen like in the days of jehoshaphat put worshipers in front other times he said walk around seven times other times he said just be still get a stone and sit down and watch what i will do strategy question the strategy you are using for your life now, who gave you? I saw another man do it, you see. He just went and started selling tomato. You see, it, God said he would bless you. But what drove you into it? I, I, a man must work. Don't stop those kind of demonic thinking. There must be a strategy. Oh Lord, change my story. I think I'll start selling shoes. Just like that just like that the bible says as they began to pray the holy ghost said separate me paul and barnabas if they were to choose they would have carried somebody else right now when we begin to pray i am convinced that god will begin to reveal strategies for people hmm. strategies on how to make the rain work some of you listen students there are students here that all you need is one strategy there is a course everybody has told you this course and you are face to face with that Goliath. You've been running away but right, you are there now. You need a strategy. Hallelujah. There are some of you, maybe your project, a supervisor may be difficult and God can give you a strategy. The strategy may not necessarily be a direct revelation from the spirit. It can be light. A one scripture imprints in your spirit as you are praying. Oh God, what do I do about this my supervisor? Suddenly a scripture comes. The gift of a man makes room. You quickly go and package wine. Not to bribe the man. You are responding to a strategy. Ordinarily he would have thrown you out with your wine. But because you are doing it as a strategy. You will laugh and say why did you have to do that? What is even your name? You have been disturbing me. It's a strategy. Hmm. Lord give me strategy. You will see men do foolish things that don't make sense. That's what God told us. When, when we wanted to start giving access to our messages i went to the lord and the lord told me he said make sure you do not sell any message keep the videos give out the mp3s that's the strategy right you may do it for your ministry and you will lose a lot of money the blessing god has tied for your ministry you would but but it is a strategy it's a strategy when i said lord what is the key to the publicity and the increase and the expansion of this ministry in terms of membership god gave me a strategy it's not a secret mark one two three you may apply it and it may not work for you but that's what the lord gave and this is the mystery behind what you see i like you as you are seated before we stand up to pray 
in one minute speak to the Lord. What is the strategy? Lord, my family has been struggling over this issue for years. Every time they want to build, there is no money. What is the strategy? Please take what I'm saying seriously. One strategy can change your situation. Not just a strategy you read from a book. One strategy. There is an easier way of doing it. That you have not seen it does not mean it's not there. Why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. In 24 hours by the strategy of the spirit he gave victory. Please pray. God has shown you your destiny helper but he's not paying attention to you. One strategy will answer the question. Pray. God has shown you the business he wants you to do. But as it is, you try and try. You need strategy. It's not like you didn't hear God. The ministry of prayer. You have been reading and reading. You did well in 100 level. 200 level. By 300 level, you started moving back. Because you need to change strategy. You need to go to his majesty. To show you. Strategy. 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 Please pray. For your ministry. Sister. You don't need all the money you think you need. What you need is a strategy from the spirit. Believe me. You have tried every idea you know. You have tried everything they have told you. Why don't you cry before God? Come on now, pray. Koinonia. Reveal unto me the strategy. My family is suffering. There is witchcraft in my family. They have vowed. But my father will not listen. What is the strategy for the deliverance of my family? Everybody in my family is an unbeliever. But I've seen in visions and dreams that they will all be saved. Between the promise and the manifestation, what is the strategy? Lord, I've applied for job everywhere. Civil defense, immigration, everywhere. What is the strategy? Hallelujah. Strategy. The last thing I'll talk about when we stand up, we're going to do a quick walk. Very, very quick walk. The last step towards the manifestation of a miracle is that you must take action. Take action. I want everybody to listen to me carefully because God is about to speak to us in a very definite way now. I hope you have been blessed so far. Take action. There are two enemies of action that are found from scripture. Number one, fear. Fear. Everybody say fear. Fear is a dangerous and wicked spirit. There are multi-millionaires sitting listening to me now. But fear has stopped them from taking action. There are many families you would have finished building your house since. Not just a bungalow that will kill you. There are people seated here. If you took the step God told you last year, you would have been feeding your family this year. Fear. Tonight, I'm showing you all the things. That there is work to do tonight. Are you getting my point? Everybody shout, I reject fear. Oh, fear does not respect age. Children, fear. Adults, fear. Great men, fear. Macho men, fear intelligent people fear right now africa is afraid nigeria is afraid many people are afraid the dollar is crashing everybody is afraid you don't know what to do right there's fear everywhere when the devil when god tells you get up and build the house this year that house must be built and all you have is hundred thousand and you calculate and you find out that the building will cost seven million and your life is a god don't disgrace me let the people in the village not say i'm stupid 
take action. Listen, the Bible says this sign shall follow, not go before. You will never see the hand of God till you stand up and move. This is somebody's, this is a word from God to someone. You have refused to move. Fear. You wrote jam nine times, you didn't get it. God is saying this time you will get it. You say, I'm not ready. I better go to the restaurant and eat food with that money. See that? Fear. Are we getting blessed? Let's look at two scriptures. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Take it high, please. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Please help us, media. Let's really hurry up. We have to hurry up. Because we have some prayer to do. Are you seeing the things that are limiting us? Truly, I am determined this year to see that every one of us has a testimony. If nothing changes in your life this year, then it's your fault. But as far as the principles that will guarantee for you to experience the rain, by the grace of God, I will do my best. For God had not given us the spirit of fear. Put your name there, just that first clause. One to read. One more time. Praise the Lord. There are many of our loved ones. 45 years. Brother, are you ready to get out of your father's house? I preached a message in 2008. It was a classic. Come out of your father's house. Thought provoking message to challenge people to leave their comfort zone. There are some of us 30, 35, 40 we are still a big liability to our parents at home. Or God come out and say, what I have now is 20,000. Come out. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have sown seeds, you are giving. Look, let me tell you, if I am a father, my, when my child gets to a certain age, one day, he will just come and say, young man, in the name of Jesus, I release the blessing upon you. Go out. Out. That's it. I'm, I'm very serious. See, you need to push yourself out of your comfort zone this year. It's not just to say it's the year of the rain. Stand up and take action. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Change, change what you have been doing. Kill fear. Take action and die doing it. Queen Esther, God took her to the palace. God removed Vashti and brought her for the salvation of Israel. But when Mordecai spoke to her, her man is plotting against these people. You better go and meet the king. She said, ah, please, oh, me too. His, his, his bring, they brought me here. Please, I'm not ready to face any embarrassment. And Mordecai said, sit down there in fear. Paraphrasing. Sit down there. When they finish with us, the Jews, they will now say, all of you in this palace, bring your bio data. And they will find out you are a Jew too and they will kill you. And she said, if I perish, I perish. This is the year some of us are going to say, if I, I'm writing that jam again. Is God speaking to somebody? I'm writing that jam again. This is the year. But I tried the business, I failed. You will do it again this year. Master, we have cast, he said we have cast the net of, how do you put it now? Right? We have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, I died. I was going to get married. The person even did introduction. Later he called and he said he's not doing it again. And now one godly brother is saying, I'm serious. He said, you look like that guy. Stand up and take action. Otherwise you'll sit down and not get married all your life. In the name of Jesus, you will take action this year. Praise the Lord. There are some of us, God is speaking. Fear. Fear. Do you know fear puts people in bondage? more people die there are many sicknesses today that are as a result of fear and worry is that true what you are afraid of has not happened but you are you are almost dying from today now people have started running out of zaria for instance you can go if you want to go what are... <laughs> of course i'm not teaching you to be careless and just roam around you. but, but uh, come on now people fear everything you are sleeping in the night you just light maybe it's the cloth you hung that just tilted in a way say I, I don't like the way this cloth why is it tilting and coming back who is there <laughs> fear fear has made people to say yes when they would have said no 
and they committed themselves into things you have no business committing yourself fear one of my friend's father listen true story one of my friend's father they would have been the earliest people to start pure water business in nigeria when god gave him that idea it was in a full gospel businessmen's fellowship right the idea came and he laughed thai water haba who will pay for water are we idiots there is stream there is sun there's light there's stove to warm water and he refused to take action and certain people took action do you think those who took the action are, are crying now this year you must take a handkerchief as you are crying be moving are you getting my point you must challenge that devil you have not broken through certain barriers nobody has ever crossed to the university in your family now you finish secondary school for instance and you're about to take that step and, and everybody said just you have tried you got diploma in, in in software application are you not okay you are ahead yet every time you sleep you see a phd and the devil is telling you cannot move tonight we have come to call that devil a liar in the name of jesus christ say i will take action say i will take action that's right the second thing that stops action is laziness everybody say laziness my goodness our time is gone laziness very important proverbs chapter 10 verse 4 please proverbs 10 verse 4 and then later on we'll look at proverbs 22 verse 13 media please don't forget proverbs 10 verse 4 there are some of us the demon that needs to fly out of our life today not jump out fly out and never return is that spirit of laziness that inertia to move forward some of us sheer laziness the bible says he become a poor that dealeth with what you never stay around me and you become lazy i have zero tolerance for lazy people a young man of 30 years by 11 30 12 he's still snoring on the bed you will beg for bread for sure there is no amount of fasting that will change that if you don't change it there are many lazy people we like a wolf free things look let me tell you there is a place for diligence if you must see the rain fall upon you this year are we getting blessed he become a poor that deals with a slack hand but the hand of the diligent does what there are some of you you are experts at begging day and night you beg everybody right please bros i beg you get 5k let me next time sister sorry i'm just knowing you don't be embarrassed i need 2k you you degrade yourself because of this devilish attitude of laziness there are grasses in people's houses to go and weed there are things to do but you get up and believe you're a big boy big boy with nothing in your pocket you calm down don't try to look successful pay the price and be successful hallelujah are you getting blessed you must reject laziness there are some students you see how some students live you think you think that they are professors right 10 or 11 exams is in one week and you see the person just strolling with his boxers go and fetch a, 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 a bucket of water lazily he cannot even wait at the tap he will turn somebody else's water drag himself to the bathroom come out 30 minutes later huh dirty boxers dirty singlets you can't wash it laziness all around you can't get up and sweep your room and some of our sisters are like that who do you want to marry tall dark and handsome he must be a millionaire you think god doesn't have sense he said do not be deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows there are many people see look let me tell you sometimes you may see me you see some of the things we are doing and you just don't be deceived by this this ever water if you want it come and carry it there is it there is more than this are you getting my point first thing tomorrow morning we are leaving for katsina it takes work it's not just anointing it takes diligence 
least you need to talk to yourself and say this year the spirit of laziness I curse you out of my life curse you out of my life an assignment you can do now you sit down and say I will do it on Wednesday you get zero right another assignment you get zero they just they, they solve the question in class they say just copy it and get 10 marks say I will do it later on look procrastination you must attack it this year hallelujah you are working in the office of your boss because you think you come for koinonia and the person you are working for is here it's no guarantee to be lazy I will fire you I employ you you are not doing what I employ in the name of Jesus I will fire you and you will come back and you will hear me preach absolutely absolutely there is truly no food for a lazy man let me tell you the truth you must get up and, and be serious about your destiny and work. There are some of us this year, you have no business with relationship. If you are passing and you see any beautiful lady, just say, blood of Jesus, and pass. Because this year is a year to you. Your own reign is coming to give you grace to stand up. No responsible parent will give her daughter to somebody who doesn't know where he's going. Are you hearing what I'm saying? very important but i believe that as we contend tonight in this miracle service it's going to be a very fast work for me i think this this is it happening to you if if we close right now i believe that you would have left with something many of us here belong to this category this laziness category right because social media facebook twitter has and 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 bbm has massaged our life of laziness something you can get up and do you see a lot of people just to walk from one place to the other you are taking a bike huh? laziness it's not like you are in a hurry for anything you just load your phone and sit down in the afternoon you are not working you are not doing anything you are a liability to everybody around you and you are just you are you are sending yarrow boys as a student for instance to go and buy you mr biggs four five thousand they bring everything you lie down with phone that you force out of your father or mother and you are making calls in the daytime even a worker is not doing that you ping your life out and the person you are pinging is in the office making money you are there struggling the day you call him he stops responding to you please don't be a liability to anybody this year whoever has been ignoring you is because you are becoming a pest rise up and begin to be hard working and you will become friends again are you hearing what i'm saying especially for the brothers brothers say amen. amen let me talk to you for one minute before we start praying this year please please something must change there are some people sir five years six years no job not because they they have never taken their cv anywhere yeah, but my uncle said it now that uncle said it's weak You came to stay in your friend's house when you stayed in his house he was a student he graduated served and is working you are still staying in his house he has gotten a job you are still staying in his house whoever that friend is drive that person out after miracle service tell him in the name of jesus christ i appreciate you three years is enough time for you to sit down get koinonia messages 2012 13 14 it will liberate you please out of my house sometimes you need to push some people into their breakthrough over pampering destroys hallelujah over pampering destroys there are times you need to get up and challenge yourself they send you money in two weeks you're already calling again laziness you won't do anything you hear that there is scholarship free there are many graduates many graduates you win is out they won't apply i think it finished today they won't do anything you said god told you you'll be an entrepreneur Huh? and you are not doing anything you've never gotten up to go for any seminar to build yourself you see a seminar you reject it you are not watching anything on youtube you are not going to sit and learn under people you are just sitting down bragging around with nonsense that's what a lot of young people are doing around huh? god blesses you with fifty thousand that can start something that can bless you you use it and buy a suit to prove a point to the people who are busy building their destinies they are not even seeing the point 
you must change this year in the name of Jesus Christ fear and laziness we are going to pray three serious prayer points the moment we pray these three prayer points tonight we will start with the sick people we will start ministering to the sick people as soon as we pray the three prayer points please begin to write your prayer requests while we minister those outside can you shout hallelujah one more time shout hallelujah the lord will visit you in a mighty way in jesus name praise the lord rise up on your feet and let's pray success is not automatic there are laws there are laws this is our year of the rain god has spoken to us shown us the loopholes lift your hands and begin to thank god for this word tonight he that he loves he chastises bless his name bless his name lift your hands inside and outside bless the name of the lord thank you father for this word it has come to clean me up it has come to purify me it has come to challenge me hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord prayer point number one say after me in the name of jesus please say it like you believe it in the name of jesus i receive grace to align my mindset to that of the word of god every thinking pattern every thought process that is not of god i challenge you in the name of jesus lift your voice and begin to pray father give me the mindset of victory i'm tired of carrying ideologies some of us have ideologies about church we have ideologies about praying in tongues ideologies about the holy spirit ideologies about prosperity ideologies about miracles ideologies about responsibility about marriage that are antagonistic to the ways of god the first miracle tonight is to pray i submit my mentality i submit my thought pattern please pray pray from your heart i refuse to be limited there is still a place for champions in life there is still a place for the great but you can never rise above your thought pattern you can never rise above your ideology you may have held on to it for years it's time to probe your ideologies it's time to probe your ideologies it's time to re-examine your mindset let this mind be in me that was in christ jesus the mindset of victory i don't see defeat in my life i don't see defeat with god i am unlimited with god i am unbeatable with god i am a champion ay, 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 ay. pray rejoice not over me my enemies for though i fall yet i will rise again hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two you are going to challenge that spirit of laziness are you getting my point fear and laziness let's combine it together say after me in the name of jesus i challenge every spirit of fear for god has not given me 
the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind therefore I declare that fear is banished from my life I refuse to fear and I challenge laziness from today I receive the grace to be diligent no more laziness it's time to take action lift your voice and begin to pray time to take action 2015 time to take financial steps 2015 time to take spiritual steps 2015 time to take intellectual steps Go ahead and pray. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I cause the spirit of fear, fear of death, fear of past failure, every intimidation. Inside and outside, pray, pray. I cause the spirit of fear. I cause the spirit of fear. I'm a champion. I can make it. I can break barriers. I can break barriers. I am well able. I am not weak. I am strong in the strength of the Lord. And I cause laziness. I cause laziness. Laziness to study the word. Spiritual laziness. Mental laziness. Physical laziness. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. As we pray this prayer point, my goodness, I already sense the power of God mighty way that's right as we pray this very prayer point the healing power of God will begin to move hallelujah I'm going to request those who are sick those who came specifically for healings you will find your way as hold on let's pray first before you come I'd like you to come believing that you will part with that sickness forever hallelujah the last prayer point say in the name of Jesus Oh God, reveal to me the strategy for possessing my blessing. Reveal to me the strategy in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I cry. What is the strategy? What is the strategy? Come on, pray, Koinonia. I cry unto the spirit of wisdom. Show me the strategy for my prosperity. Show me the strategy for my blessing. Show me the strategy for my lifting. Show me the strategy to get the attention of my destiny helpers. Show me the strategy for the church growth. Show me the strategy for the expansion of my business. Show me the strategy for five points show me strategy for first class show me the strategy to pass the jump show me the strategy hey, yeah, 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 hey, show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny pray show me the strategy Oh yes, the strategy is revealed in the place of prayer. In the place of prayer. Make sure you are praying tonight. Show me the strategy to open me up to the next level of destiny. Show me the strategy. I'm tired of making mistakes. I'm tired of moving in circles. He 
it's time to move forward it's time to move forward it's time to move forward I'm tired of marking time it's time to break forth hallelujah begin to pray now and say God visit me we are going to do the Holy Ghost will do a very quick walk very quick walk hallelujah those who are sick I'd like you to come up and line up here very quickly if you came here for the miracle service for healing please come and line up ushers help them coordinate them let's have it very quickly while that is happening make sure you write your request there is a mystery of answered prayer in this house make sure please if you have not written your prayer request start writing it i don't care what the situation is i'd like you to write it and let's drop it before god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy oh mighty god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy lord Take it, take it, take it, Those of you in front, I know you came here because of the testimonies you have had. I want you to know that your situation will not be different. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want you to believe in the power of God. There are certain conditions, listen to me, there are conditions in this place that are entirely demonic. Hallelujah. It's going to be a fast one. I don't know if we'll have time to take testimonies or not, but because there, I, I really, I really, really need to rush with time and let's do a lot please if we end late today i apologize in advance we'll do our best to kill time but please wait because god has something to do in your life hallelujah praise the lord father we give you praise it's called a miracle service we thank you for the anointing of the spirit in the name of jesus everybody make sure you participate now if there if you have loved ones who are sick you can connect you can tell them to connect praise the lord you don't need to come out for them but you can call them or do whatever and tell them look connect to what god is doing hallelujah we bless the name of the lord worship team help us praise the lord father we give you all the praise and we trust you to glorify the name of your son right now in jesus name go ahead please who brought this lady who brought this lady who came with her please if you brought somebody, let's know. Please, we are not faking it here. What's, what's wrong with her legs? Who brought her? My dear, look at me. What's wrong with your leg? I huh? started feeling something. You what? I there is a wound in my leg. My leg is swollen. Your leg is swollen. I'm looking in the spirit and I'm seeing a charm. Look at me. What What did you say? You sat in what? I woke up. So you woke up and you saw your leg. My leg. It's not a wound. This is a charm. In the name of Jesus, I break it. I curse it. Look at me. You've not been able to walk. Oh, I can walk. Okay, look at I me. I keep coming out. Look at me. Pulse. It's coming out with pus. I curse it. Look at me. Just look at me. Keep your legs. Just look at me. Don't look at your legs. Look at me. Look at me. Not, don't look at the legs. In the name of Jesus, walk. Come. come. Just come. Don't look at me. Look at me. Come. Walk. Come on. Give Jesus praise. Look at what is happening. <laughs> See, she's even surprised. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Can you climb up here? Climb by yourself. It's witchcraft. Don't be afraid. Help her if she needs any help. Okay, come. Move your legs. Just do what I'm doing. Move your legs. 
Move your legs. I curse that devil in the name of Jesus Christ. I break that power of witchcraft right now. I release that. Come on now, Koinonia. Give Jesus praise. God is healing people in this place. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that anyone that has orchestrated anything for you to fall into in the name of Jesus Christ, this night, I command those powers to be broken in the name of Jesus. My dear, it never returns to you again. And this veil that I see over you in the spirit, I command that veil to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Give God praise. Help us worship him. Please, let's hold You are the one who brought him. No, no, no. Talk, talk on his behalf. Let's save time, please. Okay. Our time. Say that I have been sick since 1980, 1998. 1998? Yes. Is he hearing what I'm saying? Yes, he's hearing okay. me. Bless you, Daddy. Since 1998, what's yes. the sickness? Liver. Liver problem. Liver problem, sir. Sir, what, what are the symptoms? What happens to him? Okay, sir. The baby was swelling. Okay. Mm. I'm going to pray for you okay. right now. Mm. When I pray for you, that swelling will go down now. Now. And you'll be able to walk. In the name of Jesus Christ. I curse that spirit. You are a spirit. Answer to the name of Jesus right now. I command the swollen stomach to go down right now. You see what is happening to you? In the name of Jesus. The heat sensation you're feeling is the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Heal right now. Sir, please come. Because the devil wants to use this and put stroke on you. Um, would you mind if, if I ask you to jump? Will you jump? Okay, just, just try Go ahead. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Just lift it as high as you can. Look at me. Don't look at the legs. Go ahead, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, let's, let's try. Just jump a little. Don't be afraid. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now walk, sir. Come. Just walk as fast as you can. As fast as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ. My God is awesome. You are healed completely in the name of Jesus Christ. as I stepped here, I saw this woman tied from head to toe. This is what I'm seeing. Head to toe. And I'm seeing blood all over you. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. What's wrong with her? Um, suddenly, she just grows lean like this. Mommy, There's look no at me. Ink. You will not die. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Just hold it. Look at me. Just look at me. Thank you, Jesus. Now I cost this power. Kalabata Kotobaya. Let mama go now. In the name of Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. I cost that spirit. Let her go now. I lose you. What couldn't she do? Like Parkinson's disease. Mama, in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk. Come. 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 Climb by yourself. Come. 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 
follow me just follow me mama look at this come on now koinonia give god praise can you lift your hands see she's laughing try to lift your hands mama can you lift your hands can you lift your hands is it which of the hands can't she lift okay go ahead lift lift your hands lift your hands bring it down lift your hands come on koinonia give god praise give god praise Give God praise in the name of Jesus. Look at me. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. I cause that spirit. Mama is released right now. Koinonia, give God praise. Let's celebrate what God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that power. Come. I need to pray for you too. Your mother, right? I pray for you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm seeing this thing. If I don't pray for you, it will affect you too. Right now, I curse. Lord, he's a worker in this house. Therefore, I curse that spirit. You are the sister. Lift your hands. If I don't pray for you, you have problem with marriage. You are young now, but we need to pray. This thing is the whole family thing. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ. I release you from this act of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. Salvation returns to this family. Go ahead and massage and let. Hallelujah. Please, we are going to really, really be fast. As soon as we pray for you, just give room. Usher, start collecting the prayer request. If you have somebody's picture as I come, I may not be able to talk again. And so we'll just lay our hands. Believe God. Believe God that the situation will change. In Jesus' name. My God is. father careful although there is an iron in your leg in the name of jesus may there be a miracle i command this shorter leg to grow out now by the spirit of god madam look at me do you want to try walking uh -uh. i'm not asking you what you, have. you came here because you believe god can help you is that true you believe that Okay, as careful as you can, move your legs. You're, you're related to her? Come. Who are you? You are sister, madam? All right. Don't cry. Don't cry. Please. Come, madam. Do you feel pain? You feel pain because of the iron. It's difficult now for us to... But after I pray for you, can you talk to the doctors to look at your legs and look at the iron? They'll be coming on Wednesday. Okay, fine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we agree. That as they come on Wednesday and check this leg, they will remove this iron and she will walk normally. Look at, look at this. Look at what the power of God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse that spirit. Let there be a miracle right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her have a seat. Please quickly, let's, let's save time. Worship team, help us. Let's not have... 
They will remove the iron, madam, and you will walk normally in the name of Jesus Christ. I need to pray for you. Yes, I need to pray for you, madam. Because as I'm looking at you, I'm seeing pains. I'm seeing pains, um, like abdominal pains. And the Lord is asking me to minister to you. Can I pray for you? Hold my hands. Jesus, do a miracle right now. I cause that pain by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please just line them forward. Let them just come forward in the name of Jesus. I don't need to ask you what the situation is. I really want you to believe that. Praise the Lord. I, I don't want you to think that maybe if I don't ask you, it means I don't give value to you. No. It's not even me doing the miracle. Right? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Such an awesome God Such an awesome God Hallelujah Please rise up everybody Rise up everybody We're going to cause every wicked power Please listen Hallelujah Look at me. I told us that one of the benefits and the blessings of prayer is the ability to cause limiting powers. It's called a miracle service. And this is January. Hallelujah. We believe in the full gospel and everything Jesus died to give. Listen, every power that has tied anyone's destiny down, it's time for it to go. Are you listening to me? Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Go ahead and pray and say, Father, every spirit that is not of God looming around my life and my family, please make sure you are praying that as the word of God comes now, there will be mighty, mighty deliverance. Lord, let there be deliverances. Break limitations over people's lives. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 The reason why the reason why we do deliverance is not is not working against the fact that Jesus says we are this and that and that it is on the strength of that the Bible says although he has put all things under his feet he said we do not yet know I hear a lot of people criticize the ministry of deliverance and all of that um, while I know that there are exaggerations here and there let me tell you something the people of God must be subjected to the full weight of all that God's power and anointing can do are you following me now there are people who have struggled here. You love God, but doors will just not open. Let me tell you, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. And by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I'm going to minister to people right now. I see an angel of the Lord moving, and a lady is going to shout. I don't know why God does these things. Under the anointing. When that happens... It's a sign that the Spirit of God is ready to move and deliver people. Lift your hands. Hear me, brothers and sisters. It takes the power of God to subdue principalities. And there are some of you right now, both for you and your family, there are forces that will not let you go. But this night, and right now, my goodness, there is the fire of the spirit at the count of three. It's not just a recitation. You're going to shout that name. The name that paid access for your liberty. Bring up, bring them out. My goodness. Deliverance is already happening inside and outside. There will be mighty angels. There is the sword of the spirit. Lord, let there be deliverance. Every family, every destiny tied under any yoke of bondage i invoke it in the spirit that at the count of three those devils are under fire one two three come out now 
I command powers be gone now. I cause principalities. I cause spirits. I cause powers inside, outside. The angel of the Lord is moving. I command witchcraft. Bring them out. Spirits of ancestry. In the name of Jesus. The powers that have tied down man's destinies. The forces that have refused to let you go. Right now, I come with an apostolic anointing. And in the name that is above all names. Let fire fall from heaven over your life, over your academics, over your marriage. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Lift your hands. Was he shouting one more time? Please bring them. Listen. For some of you, what will happen right now is not just for you alone, but for your family. Just keep them down there. Hallelujah. Malakata. And I see this affecting many ladies because I see marriage is being tied. Makoto Tobakata. Sheketelekaya. As you shout that name, Jesus, you may not even know that that thing is in your family. But all of a sudden, physical fire physical fire will begin to burn right now on the count of three i challenge those powers one two three go 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 i cause that spirit delay delay i cause that spirit inside and outside i command that devil of delay to go now i command that power tying your destiny i command that power tying your breakthrough i command that power tying your family the price has been paid by the blood of jesus i break every legal access by the blood of Jesus, I break every legal access. By the blood of Jesus, I break every legal access. By the blood of Jesus, I release marriages. I release miracles. I command breakthrough. Fire is burning. I command breakthrough. I set those altars on fire. I set those covens on fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Where are those who have been oppressed academically? Lord, where are they? There are people who would have moved forward. As I speak right now, fire is coming on people. Fire is coming. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. 2015, the year of the rain. Release the academics now. I command those powers. I challenge them. They must leave. There is a family the Lord is showing me. You have been under stagnation for 10 years. 10 solid years. But as I prophesy right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command that family to be released now. I command that family to be released now. I command that family to be released now. Hallelujah. 
in the name that is above all names i pray and i prophesy the lord is showing me men whose hands have been tied and and see when your hands are tied it means the capacity for favor and the capacity to move forward is not there lift your hands some of you will feel physical fire physical fire on your hands there are chains burning lord where are they let the sword of favor break them free from every oppression right now as i speak anyone whose hands are tied in the spirit i command those hands to be loose now i command those hands to be loose now the fire is falling 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 inside and outside falling i break the chain my goodness there are angels outside the fire is falling chains of delay hallelujah hallelujah in one minute lift up the exact situation you want god to change begin to talk to him go ahead before prophecy comes please don't keep quiet no matter how impossible it is there is an anointing inside and outside make sure you are talking to the lord this and that and that are my requests do a miracle some of you need a 24 hour miracle Now all those here in front in the name of jesus and by the fire of the holy spirit at the count of three not only will those devils leave they must release your family members i speak to every spirit you know my voice i represent the embassy of heaven and in the name of jesus at the count of three you will leave now one two three go 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 never to return never to return never to return never to return go go hallelujah stretch your hands towards this request your requests are there please in case you've not dropped yours locate it quickly to the ushers it's not a ritual there is a mystery of answered prayer hallelujah the bible says how that Ezekiah took the request before god the threats may be joblessness it may be impossible situations as i kneel upon this request and we pray together just for one or two minutes see i assure you i assure you you will return with a testimony except you refuse to come and testify stretch your hands and begin to pray thank you jesus
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I'd like you to receive every prophetic word. Every prophetic word. I don't care whatever it is that you came here with. Remember last week we taught that words activate spiritual laws. Hallelujah. I want you to receive. For some of you, there will be an instant performance in the name of Jesus. I want to start by praying for families. Every family that has been in a state of stagnation, please lift your hands inside and outside. I'm prophesying now. Every family represented in this place in the name of Jesus Christ in this year of the rain, I command that between now and next month miracle service let there be dramatic breakthroughs let there be dramatic breakthroughs let there be dramatic breakthroughs by the agency of the spirit we activate every law that needs to be in motion in the name of Jesus the laws of favor the laws of destiny help us in the name of Jesus I pray anyone here who has been under any academic bondage from secondary school to master's PhD right now in this year of the rain I command speed for you I declare move forward now move forward now make progress now move forward now in the name of Jesus I pray for anything that has died in your hands business the works of your hands relationships in the name that is above all names let resurrection happen in your life now please believe what i'm saying believe what i'm saying god is changing people's situations this is how god changes situations by the power of his prophetic word i say it again whatever has died i speak to that which was dead come back to life now I command every blood condition whoever is standing here and you are SS right now we change that genotype to AA in the name of Jesus Christ I cause hepatitis be crushed to the root in the name of Jesus we cause HIV you leave God's people in the name of Jesus. Everyone here who has been oppressed by spirits, you sleep in the night and they oppress you. In the name of Jesus, let the fire of the Holy Ghost bring deliverance to you now. Ay, ay, ay. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit bring deliverance to you now. There are people here. It works for others until it gets to your turn. Then it fails. Right now in the name of Jesus. I command that the last time that tragedy happened in your life. The power of God is moving on this world. Moving strong on this world. The last time it happened. The mystery behind that tragedy, I cause it in the name of Jesus. I declare that in this January, between now and next month's miracle service, what you could not do in the whole of 2014, may my God empower your hand to do it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every dying CGPA here. Hear the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. 
I command it to come alive. There are people here, students, your true status is first class. But something has tied you down. Your true status is four points. But something has tied, whatever that something is, I lift it off your life now. In this year, 2015, go back to your departments and break barriers. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every business here. Whatever has stopped it from working, in the name of Jesus, we command it to come alive now. Whoever needs to come into your life between now and next miracle service and open a door for you, I call them forth now. I call them forth now. I declare whoever is jobless and looking for a job here or your family members in the name that is above all names where they say there are no jobs we create jobs now believe it believe it we create jobs now in the name of jesus christ whoever has been assigned by my father to favor you and has refused to respond to you in the name of jesus may the lord compel them to respond in the name of jesus i pray for your spiritual life whatever has robbed you of an effective prayer life every worry everything that has robbed you i command fresh impartation of prayer grace receive it now fresh impartation of prayer fire whatever makes you study the bible and you don't understand may the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now and i pray for you every habit in your life masturbation pornography and any other thing that is not of god that has robbed you of your christian integrity you love God but you find things pushing you that embarrass you right now I agree with you be delivered now I agree with you be delivered now hallelujah whoever is being eyed for death in this place that the devil has vowed that you will not see February miracle service I'm praying by the mystery of the blood i open that door of gate of, of death and i command in the name of jesus that your soul is ransomed from the gates of death in the forthcoming election you are preserved in the name of jesus whoever comes to destroy you will die before he gets to you in the name of jesus as you travel on the road you are preserved you cannot be a victim of accident in the name of jesus i establish the covenant of peace upon your life you are protected by the angels of heaven i declare right now that in 2015 living from hand to mouth that spirit of begging living from hand to mouth by the mystery of divine supply i bail you out of that wicked situation in the name of jesus i pray for you whatever you wrote here as a request right now i agree with you that it is turned into a testimony i say it one more time whatever you wrote here as a request I agree with you. We turn it into a testimony. By the power that turned the rod of Moses into a serpent and back into a rod, I turn what was here as a, as a prayer request. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let it become a testimony in your hands. In the name of Jesus every factor that must be in place 
for you to stand here and testify i release it in the name of jesus i pray we pray for our lecturers every lecturer that has been victimized and any lecturer that the devil is eyeing to bury this year in the name of jesus by the mystery of the blood they are preserved i'm speaking any position that belongs to any god-fearing lecturer that is being truncated by powers of darkness we stand as the parliament of heaven in this city and we enforce compliance in the name of jesus christ and i pray for you if there is one thing that should happen in your life let it be indescribable favor 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 i prophesy from the depths of my heart if you have never seen favor happen in your life you will see favor that will make you cry financial favor marital favor academic favor spiritual favor receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah lift your hands and bless the lord thank you jesus hallelujah now you're here you've never given your heart to the lord jesus you've never made him lord of your life we're out of time please keep standing everybody let's honor these people you are here and you have never given your life to christ remember we said the basis for your victory is what jesus christ has done wherever you are or you have once given your life to christ but for some reason you found your life going haywire and you need to make your ways right don't say time is gone please wherever you are inside or outside you might be a new student you've been a christian all your life or you may be new in this town i pray right now that you respond to the call of god wherever you are you are returning to jesus or you are making decisions for the first time please make your way to the front be bold about it be bold about it i know god is talking to somebody don't wait for anybody to come you are the first person find your way to the front god bless you god bless you please make sure you celebrate them as they come celebrate them god bless you those outside no matter how far you are make your way to the front jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men i will be ashamed of you before my father if you deny me before men young and old make your way you are not too far don't let the devil say you are far make your way run to the front run to the front forget about your neighbor or who you came with it's a personal affair tonight hallelujah thank you so much for coming lift your hands as i leave you to pray say after me jesus i believe in you i believe you died for me tonight i repent of my sins i obtain forgiveness and cleansing wash me with the blood of jesus I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that I'm a changed person the power of sin is broken over my life and I'll never be the same in the name of Jesus now keep your hands lifted father thank you you brought these ones to your throne may their decisions be genuine preserve them by the power of the Holy Spirit they will never be the same I break the power of sin over your life you have eternal life into your spirit and I declare that you are of the family of faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now I'd like you to follow the ushers, follow the gentlemen waving their hands. All of you this way, they'll give you a few informations and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you, brother. Join them and they will lead you into that place. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.